It's a college football game day that feels unlike any other. But in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, it is at long last game day. The offseason has felt like an eternity. We've dreamed to see the day when our beloved game will return. Well, the wait is over. College football is back. The traditions. The rivalries. And the moments that leave you in awe. He may take it all the way. Shivers slipped a little. Oh, no, and Shivers is in. This is Jones, and he's loose. Ball free. Touchdown for an exclamation point. Wow. Our 2020 campaign begins tonight. The season might look a little different, but the game we love is all the same. College football, welcome back. College football on CBS Sports Network is presented by GEICO. Never been happier to say it. The South Alabama Jaguars from the Sun Belt, the Southern Miss Golden Eagles from Conference USA, a reduced crowd here at The Rock in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So Conference USA, everyone but Old Dominion is playing. Sun Belt playing as well. You see postponed, still question mark. Big Ten, MAC, Mountain West, and Pac-12. So for tonight, we have this matchup. And with that, we say hello, college football fans. It's great to see you. Aaron Taylor, Carter Blackburn, with a ridiculous mustache for one more week. And I tell you what, as the national anthem played mm -hmm. and we got ready for this football game, there's a swirl of emotions because still major health concerns, still social justice concerns. And yet, the emotion that we're feeling as we get ready for kickoff is the excitement of a college football season underway. Gratitude. I've got so much gratitude for us to be here. I didn't think it was going to happen. This summer was touch and go. And whether or not we were going to get here and have this moment, our country's been through a lot. The world's been through a lot these last five or six months. But sports has always been the great unifier. So for these next three and a half or four hours, let's sit back, shut out the rest of the world, and enjoy the greatest sport on the planet. And we intend to enjoy it. And Southern Miss has been enjoying success of late under their veteran quarterback, Jack Abraham. Well, Abraham's been a three-year starter, and he led the Conference USA's best passing attack a season ago. Started out red hot, a four-to-one touchdown to interception ratio, but down the stretch, decision-making, hesitancy was a factor. He's got to clean that up because turnovers were the biggest problem that the Golden Eagles had a season ago. So you have a veteran quarterback on the Southern Miss side. Meanwhile, for South Alabama, Desmond Trotter, a young quarterback who they're hoping catches fire in 2020. Yeah, the Jags offense was stuck in the mud a season ago until Desmond Trotter took over. He started the last four games and really jump-started this offense, 30% better in almost every statistical category, and really led the charge against that Arkansas State team that finished the season with eight wins. It was a huge upset. If this offensive line can give Trotter time, he will be able to deal and deliver the football to the greatest group of wide receivers that maybe has existed underneath Steve Campbell. Well, Steve Campbell's certainly hoping that's how it works out tonight. Third season is just the second coach in South Alabama football history program started in 2009. Jay Hobson, fifth season as Southern Miss head coach. Very familiar with Southern Miss. This is his thir third stint, but four seasons, four winning seasons. Southern to the top is the goal in 2020 to get the Golden Eagles back atop Conference USA. And as you would expect, in early September in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, it is warm and it is balmy as we get set for kickoff. And since it has been a while since you've seen a kickoff in college football, we remind you, second year you've had the fair catch rule on the kickoff. So if you have inside the own 25 yard line, if you have a fair catch, it's going to come out to the 25, and we're going to start playing from the 25. Well, here it is. There have been other college football games, but this is the first FBS versus FBS game on national television, and it is our privilege to bring it to you on CBS Sports Network. Kickoff in 2020. 
And it will be South Alabama who starts at the 25-yard line. So you heard about Desmond Trotter from AT, the sophomore from Irondale, Alabama, the grandson of Ozzie Newsom, the Pro Football Hall of Famer, longtime GM of the Ravens, all-time Crimson Tide great. As AT mentioned, closed 2019 with phenomenal four-touchdown performance in that upset win over Arkansas State. He shared the job as a freshman, now as a sophomore. It is Desmond Trotter's job at quarterback. Trotter pulls it, and it is incomplete. Tried to start with a quick hitter into the hands of Jalen Wayne, and it is incomplete. Trying to get it rolling, and Aaron, just as you expected, try to get it into the hands of the playmakers. I know you have your eye on the South Alabama offensive line. Well, they really hold the key to this entire offense. They have to run the ball to make Southern Miss respect them enough and stay balanced so that they can throw when they want to and have time to protect Trotter. South Alabama 2-10 last year, the only Sun Belt win, the closer. It's a handoff, and Davis has it for a gain of a couple in the Southern Miss defense, who has been stout under Jay Hobson, led by Santrell Latham, the Mike linebacker junior from Meridian, Mississippi. And it is a, especially the secondary for this Southern Miss Golden Eagle defense, almost elite. Very good. This was a defense, this nasty bunch that flew around. One of the things they did an extremely good job of is getting after the quarterback, particularly on third down. And here already, third and long for South Alabama against that aggressive D. And here they come. Trotter steps up and delivers to the outside. Tolbert has it. Tolbert goes rolling. First down. How about touchdown for now? Question where he steps out. But Tolbert goes 73 yards for a touchdown on third and eight. Touchdown, South Alabama. Got to take a look to see if he stepped out. But what an incredible way to start and jump start this offense. That right foot looks good, Carter. This touchdown is going to stand as called. And this coaching staff told us that the Jags needed to start quick to build off the confidence of the way they finished the season a year ago, and they did oh. just that. Bobble. And now a toss to the end zone on the two point. That looked like a bad hold there. Tanner McGee is the third string quarterback. He's taken over as a holder in place of the punter, Jack Brooks. So McGee ready for a scramble. All right, it's imperfect. But oh, does it look good to say touchdown. This is what Tolbert does best. Last season against Arkansas State had four touchdowns. Jump starts this offense out of the gate. Jags up six. Jalen Tolbert and the Jags are happy football's back. 73-yard touchdown, 6 nothing South Alabama. Let's check in with Aaron Taylor's keys to the game. So far, so good for the Jags up front. Defensively, they have to win the trenches with some youth. The defensive line was the strength of the defense a year ago. A bunch of seniors left. For Southern Miss, the offense has to protect the football. We talked about the role that turnovers played a season for them ago in this defense. Limit the explosive plays. Defensive coordinator Tony Pecoraro told us that we cannot let them get behind us. Two missed tackles early on, showing the effects of this weird and unique offseason leading up to this first game. So openers, you always say, hey, tackling, special teams, there's going to be some things that aren't tightened up. This one, especially because of the limited practice time, players in and out, down and up. And, I mean, putting a roster together for the opening game, that's been a challenge for everyone as well. It's what we expected. It's what the coaches expected. Maybe not to show up as quickly as it did, but you have to settle down and do what we've done all offseason if you're Southern Miss, and that's relax and adjust. Well, case in point for Southern Miss, Jalon Adams opted out. He returned three kicks for touchdowns last year. So it's Baker and Ragsdale who are back, and it'll be a touch, to, touch back for Southern Miss, bringing it out to the 25-yard line for the Golden Eagles as the Jags and the Golden Eagles are separated. 
Abraham, the classic, undersized, under-recruited player, grows into a star quarterback, right? Southern Miss, his third collegiate stop after Louisiana Tech, Northwest Mississippi, now a third-year starter for the Golden Eagles. All the numbers have been big, but the challenge this year, cut down on the interceptions 15 a year ago as a junior. Decision-making was a factor, and the factor was he wasn't making decisions. He was hesitant. He wasn't trusting what he was seeing and just letting it rip. Abraham on first down. This is Ragsdale with the carry. The Jags rally to the football. Southern Miss wants to run the football a whole lot more in 2020, and they will attempt to do so with an offensive line largely back from 2019. Four returning starters for this unit up front, but you're right, Carter. They were third in the conference running the football, only 117 and a half yards per game. That is not good enough. They're looking for more balance under first-year coordinator Matt Kubik. Abraham shovel toss. That's a completed pass, but it's the same result. No gain. Baker makes the grab, but now here the Golden Eagles are in third and long against the South Alabama defense, which is shuffled all over the place. That, that's been a big switch for the Jags. This defense prides itself on being physical up front, particularly in that front six or seven. That last tackle was made by Nick Mobley. Led him a season ago with tackles. He's a big run stopper up front. But these guys right here up front on the defensive line of scrimmage, those are going to be the key for the Jags tonight. Well, third and long was friendly for South Alabama. We'll see how friendly it is for the Golden Eagles. There's motion. Whistle. Electronic whistle. <laughs> That's right. Offside, defense number seven jumped in the neutral zone and caused an offensive play to react. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Our referee, Wayne Winkler, officials will be masked electric whistles and that's disappointing Chris Henderson's one of the old vets on this team usually provides leadership but a costly mistake makes this third down conversion much more feasible isn't it amazing you go into the opener and uh, you have so many things everything's gonna go perfect and then oh just one little thing and you're third and four that's football man. so we'll get into some of some more of the COVID-19 adjustments for college football in 2020 but now here we have another one so back-to-back -back flags those electronic whistles getting an early test here in Hattiesburg from our crew ball start offense number 17 five yard penalty still third down As we were getting ready to roll over, uh, we noticed the officials in their van rolling over. And yes, everyone following the testing protocols, whistles, the electronic whistles are recommended. The masked and the officials were all masked up and ready to roll. Heading over to Robert Stadium here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And they have gotten to use it all early. Back to third and nine all now. All right, let's figure this one out. This is going to be on both guards. Look like they win early. Ball starts. Offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Wayne Winkler, a lot of early camera time and 2020. I like this Bryce Foxworth, number 68. He's got some nasty to him. He's one of the players that they're looking to get engaged. Kubik really likes the athleticism of this unit. They said they're going to start with the inside zone and work their way out. Inside zone is perfect for Foxworth, but he's got to be smarter because right now the Golden Eagles are marching the wrong way. And as an offensive lineman, you'd mean nasty as a compliment, right? Yes. Yeah. So Abraham behind the nasties on third and 14, dragging Brownlee wrapped up as the Jags rally to the football well short. Brownlee dropped near the 25-yard line. It's DeShazer who leads the way. Another flag is down. A.J. DeShazer, the junior rover. An eligible player downfield. Number 89 was covered up at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Correction. That penalty is declined. Here we go. Fourth down. Makes sense. We've seen enough of third down on this <laughs> series. And, and we've also seen mistakes by both of these teams, and that is part and parcel 
of just how disjointed this entire offseason has been. Southern Miss needs to settle itself down. But if you're South Alabama, you got to be feeling pretty good how you're starting out of the gate here on the road. Jalen Wayne is back. Base in the punt will punt from the 15. Short, but a good roll for the Golden Eagles. Short punt, good roll out of bounds at the 31 yard line. So, South Alabama with a big touchdown to get it started. Miss PAT at six. Nothing. Jags on the Golden Eagles to get it started on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. South Alabama started playing football in 2009, scored a huge season opening win at Mississippi State in 2016. Then they knocked off a ranked San Diego State team later that year. Now, so Mobile, Alabama with a, uh, it's a short drive. In fact, they came up on game day. They came up leaving about 4 o'clock today. That's Tolbert who was tackled on the edge by Brooks on first down. A strong baseball tradition at South Alabama as well, including Luis Gonzalez, Diamondback fans are cheering, Yankees fans are booing, and Marlon Anderson. So uh, a relatively quick run up from Mobile, Alabama to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Nothing doing on second down as well. Carlos Davis wrapped up, and that's Latham on the stop. And now here we are at third down, which was very friendly the last time when Tolber broke it for 73 yards. And this is where the nasty bunch would like to dial up some pressure. They're pretty aggressive. They put a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of their defensive backs with man coverage. Gonna be interesting to see if Pecoraro decides to turn the heat up here. Desmond Trotter on third and six. Steps up, quick hitter, delivered, apparently short. We'll see. That is close. It's Tyer, the tight end, who makes the grab. And. If you're South Alabama, you got to go here. This was awfully close, but what are you going to save it for? You're in midfield. Your defense is playing lights out. You don't even think about this. If it's fourth and anything less than a yard, trust that offensive line that you came into the game is going to be there for you. And in fact, they get the first down and move the stick. And we may have another look at that one on the spot because it was close and. It looks short to me. We'll take a look. I think Jay Hobson is making that point right now. The ruling on the field was a first down. The previous play is under review. All right. So we'll check the spot because it was close. The initial spot looked like short, but tire. Watch the heads lineman running in from the bottom of the screen here. He's running in right towards the football, and he looks to be inside of the yard to gain marker just beyond that 40 yard line. And I tell you what, give credit to Swayze Bozeman, not only on the tackle, but maybe even knowing where that first down marker was and swinging tire back. So that's uh, senior Sam linebacker and second year starter, Swayze Bozeman. And here he comes up to make the stop on tire, does the football, I mean, the, the 41 is the line to gain, and looked just short. But again, it was spotted in cold first and 10. Clearly right there, Southern Miss only rushing. After three video players. review, the ruling on the field stands first down. Okay. Right. So no indisputable video evidence to overturn it. Let it stand. First down. Nasty bunch only rushed three that time, trying to force Desmond Trotter to find the holes in that zone defense. He did exactly that for the fresh set of downs. That makes the Jags two for two on third down with the TD from Jalen Tolbert. By the way, Tolbert last year averaged 19 yards a catch. This year, 73. <laughs> Trotter's going to take it on first down. Trotter on the draw, gets across the 45 yard line. Esmond Trotter, Trotter started the final four of 2019. That school record four touchdown passes all to Jalen Tolbert in the win over Arkansas State. So they didn't win a game in the Sun Belt until that closing win over a good A-State team. So they had a lot of momentum at the end of 2019. Heavy pressure, second down. Trotter steps up and is picked off inside the 15-yard line. Scott has it. 
Scott across the 30-yard line and brings it all the way back to the 34. That's Eric Scott Jr. Immediate dividends out of Butler Community College has his first pick as a Golden Eagle. Southern Miss was dead last in Conference USA last year in turnover margin, so plays like this help. Trotter just got greedy. He felt overconfident throwing the ball to Tobert into double coverage, and Southern Miss makes him pay. A takeaway by the Golden Eagle D. Will it be Southern Miss to the top? 55 full slate, including Cam Newton's debut with the Patriots against the Dolphins. Last year's MVP, Lamar Jackson, leading the Ravens into a matchup with Baker Mayfield Brown. It all begins next Sunday, noon Eastern, with NFL Today on CBS. Frank Gordon now a Jet in his 16th season, the five time Pro Bowler. Jets open at Buffalo. The true freshman running back for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, Frank. Gore Jr. 5'8 with tremendous vision. Frank Gore. Across the board, the coaches told us this isn't your typical true freshman. The kid doesn't flinch. He's got tremendous suddenness, has a knack for finding the running lane. So talking with offensive coordinator Matt Kubik, who's in his first year, he really likes what Frank Gore can do behind this athletic offensive line. I don't think the toughness in that family is questioned at all. Abraham on the roll, on first and ten, looking for the throwback. It's covered. So now Abraham will complete. Boy, well, kept the play alive, found Brownlee, has a first down. There is a flag down. But well, that's Abraham's mobility, which I know you think is a strength. Now first, we'll get the call from Wayne Winkler. Ineligible downfield player, offense number 63, five yard penalty, replay first down. These are killers. This is going to be the right tackle, Fletcher, right here. Keep your eye on him getting downfield. Gets a nice block there, but clearly a little bit more than the three yards that you're allowed. Give him credit for the aggression, but another costly penalty up front for Southern Miss. I like to teach you about offensive line play so we can break that one down in our spare time. Abraham pop, that slip, and it nearly broke. A 50 is Tim Jones, the big play wide receiver. In fact, the only wide receiver coming back for Southern Miss who had a catch last year. This one for 20. Yeah, the three-year starters, Mr. Reliable. He's also the best blocker on the team. The only returning starter or player with a catch for the Golden Eagles a season ago, and he came up big there on that quick slant. Gallman had a touchdown saving tackle. Now to Ragsdale on the ground. Still not as the ball out. Uh, Ragsdale's down. Looked like Cole was thinking about coming away with it, but Ragsdale was down. Still not much doing in the running game for the Golden Eagles early on. Not for either of them, really. We have, let's see, a combined eight rushing yards in the game so far. And they both wanted to come out and establish a run, but the timing of offensive linemen has been really interrupted throughout the summer and the early fall practice, so I'm not surprised by this. Abraham fakes it, tosses it. That's Grayson Gunner, the graduate transfer from Arkansas, who has his first catch as a Southern Miss Golden Eagle from Madison, Mississippi. Coaches told us that Gunter really separated himself from the rest of the tight ends. Just a quick bootleg, and he's dragging across. That's the athleticism that you need at that position in the offense, and a little bit of the sprinkling of Matt Kubik, the offensive coordinator. Hurry it up. Try to get it back to the run. Inside zone. Ragsdale drop. No gain. Maybe a loss. Now, through the air, you've had 36 yards on the last two pass plays. That one went for 16 to Gunter. But clearly, Matt Kubik and the Golden Eagles trying to establish the run. Well, you have to do enough to make the defense play you even so that you can create the matchups and the looks that you want to take advantage of the receivers that you can have to go down the field. It was Trotter who threw the pick to give the football back to the Golden Eagles. Now Abraham trying to take advantage. Another handoff. Jags rally to the football. Shove back. Nothing doing there for Baker. DeShazer leads the way again. These linebackers are just coming downhill. This is a counter play where you pull two backside offensive linemen 
but this young defensive line for South Alabama is really winning their matchup on early on here. That was the big question mark. That was the strength of the defense a season ago. It was a senior laden defensive line. They were big and stout. Five of these nine players up front are first or second year players, and they're playing pretty well here so far. Abraham on third and ten. Leaves it high and incomplete on the hands for Tim Jones, but it was high and it's knocked away. Excellent coverage from Devin Rocket, the senior from Oxford, Mississippi. A little bit of pressure right as he was throwing the football from the backside. You wonder if it affected him or not. That's a catchable ball by Jones. Not an easy catch, but one he's got to come down with. Southern Miss, the big loss in the receiving core. Quez Watkins, who led CUSA in receiving yards last year, went to the Eagles, sixth round pick. Mason Hunt won the punting job. Jalen Wayne back for South Alabama. So Golden Eagles get a takeaway on defense, but it results in no points. It will bounce inside the five, and the Golden Eagles down it. Yes, they do. Just inside the one. So no points on the board off the takeaway, but that is a big time field position win for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. So give credit. Southern ready. They got the Jag backed up. Six nothing South Alabama on Southern Miss all across the country. Many Americans are coming together in the name of social justice. Last Friday men and women women on both the South Alabama and Southern Miss campus came together in a sign of unity. Both athletes and non athletes marched for equality. Southern Miss head coach Jay Hobson and our conversation with him and some of his uh, comments this week AT he, he talked uh, very openly about uh, diversity is a strength. I really liked uh, that conversation with Jay Hobson. And Jay Hobson also said, when you're on a football team, you get so close, it's like brothers. And when a brother raises a concern, you listen to what that concern is. And for you and me, football and has brought us together to share our, off the mic, we, we, we talk about these things all the time and we feel it and uh, it's, it's real and I know it's real for you. Sports has always been the great unifier. It brings together groups that wouldn't ordinarily mix, but it challenges us to listen, to be better people, to push the envelope of what has been the status quo. And to your point, it's done an excellent job of bringing you and I together in the friendship that we've developed. And I honor these players and coaches and communities who have done the same in their own ways. Crowder is going to complete Tolbert across the 10. You know, in, in our experiences and conversations, there's a reason why injustice should be uncomfortable. And there's uncomfortable feelings right now, and there should be. And that's one of the reasons we continue to discuss this as we discuss a football game. This whole process with, with racial inequality and social justice has forced me to look very hard at myself and answer some questions that I didn't know were there. I had to start honestly with myself about what my own implicit biases were, where my beliefs come from, how willing am I to make other people wrong so that I can feel right. And you're right, it has been uncomfortable. But if we have that willingness to do that, we can continue to evolve and do what this country's done best, and that's adapt. We're not where we need to be, but we have taken some serious steps these last couple months that I hope continue. And you know, one of the best parts of what we do in sports television is people from all different backgrounds, all different experiences, and, and on a team, you you get to experience that yourself and, and people's perspectives, and it, it really has opened it up for us, including as we travel around the country and different places and different circumstances, uh, you begin to understand. And now we have third and one. That's we down will, in football. We will continue the discussions about everything related to college football. Your Southern Miss, you have to watch Trotter's legs in this situation. On third and one, slip it through. Davis breaks a tackle and has a first down. Tough run in from Carlos Davis, the sophomore from Muscle Shoals. They call him the Swamper. 
He's a swamper, the leading rusher from a season ago. This is just counter football. Winning at the point of attack, Davis elects to bounce it outside. But Carter, this South Alabama offensive line is winning its matchup early. This staff has to be ecstatic about how balanced they've been able to be running the football when they need to. Trotter now with some more space. Rolling, chased, Trotter all the way back to the 11. Has to heave it to the sidelines. That's a veteran play by the sophomore making just his fifth start to get away from the pressure and have enough arm strength to get it to the sideline. This was a combination of coverage on the back end and some late pressure up front. Keep your eye on the right tackle right here. He's going to overset, allowing the defensive end to come up. That's what initially flushes Trotter. Nowhere to go, so when Trotter turns his back and turns around, he has nowhere to dump the ball, so he does what he should do, and that's live to play another down. Back end to helping the front end get pressure on the QB. And again, 39 sacks a season ago for Southern Miss. They'd love to do it. Now a little miscommunication for South Alabama, forced to take a timeout. So regroup timeout Time for out. the Jags. They South have Alabama. a 6 nothing lead, but South Alabama seconds. backed up. Desmond Trotter has the big play for South Alabama, the 73-yard touchdown to Jalen Tolbert. Bobble on the PAT, so that's why six is up there. But you take those numbers for Desmond Trotter, that looks similar to what he was doing at the end of 2019. In that Arkansas State game, he had an interception that was kind of an ill-advised throw, just like he did early in this game, taking a shot into double coverage, trying to target Tolbert. But this young man has really stepped his game up. The coach is talking about how you can tell how he's evolved in practice, being more of a vocal leader, walking in and saying, this is my time and my team. He's ready to lead this offense. Now they do have the backup and Chance Lovertich, who the coach has said we will see Lovertich as well in certain situations. So eyes out there, but Desmond Trotter. Eight games as a freshman, started four. On second and ten, pressure picked up. Trotter delivers. It's Tolbert again. Forced out at the 45-yard line, but Trotter to Tolbert is a recipe for success for the Jags. Southern Miss really respecting the deep speed of Trotter. Look at that cushion. Trotter with the foot in the ground just breaks the route off. Southern Miss defensive backs need to play a little bit more aggressive and try to disrupt the timing because that ball floated in the air. If they can break on those quicker, they may be able to jump one of those and take it to the house the other way. That's an 18-yard grab, 89 receiving yards already for Jalen Tolbert. Back to the ground on first down and a short gain for Terrion Avery, junior from Wiggins, Mississippi. This run game's not pretty, but these are the body blows, Carter. These are the the rhythm that you need to establish. Remember, the offensive line has been one of the position groups most affected by the preparation of COVID because it's all timing. It's all working together. And with that being abbreviated, many coaches across the country have talked about how hard it's been. Trotter into the heavy pressure on second down. Heaves it long. Hold it inside the five. Jalen Wayne makes a remarkable grab, and he knows it. No question about Trotter's arm strength, but remember, Wayne had the drop on the first play of the game, but tremendous concentration and hand strength to pluck that ball out of the air. Wayne Enterprises, first and goal, fade, but first. The ruling on the field was a catch. The previous plays under the further review. All right. 49 on the catch for now for Jalen Wayne. Let's have a look. Pretty tight coverage that time by Southern Miss. But look at the concentration and the body control. The DB's got his arm on his right arm, but Wayne's able to grab that football and keep it up off the ground. Largely one handed. What an incredible catch. Okay, you see uh, complete and continuous control of the ball throughout the process of contacting the ground. As Section 4, Article 3 says. 
You're seeing what they're looking at because when his body hits the ground, the ball moves a little bit, which it's allowed to do as long as he maintains control, which to me, it looks clearly like Wayne does. Ball's tightly pressed against his body. You can understand why they wanted to take another look at it, but it looks like a tremendous catch from Wayne. Man. So you have Wayne 49 if it stands. And then 73 from Tolbert. Here's After call. video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. First and goal. Well, now you question, all right, uh, when they were trying to hurry up and get it into the hands of Tolbert on that fade, do you go right back to Tolbert on the fade, or do you go elsewhere? Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. South Alabama last year, much room for improvement. Only 53% touchdown percentage last year. Get Trotter outside the pocket, give him a two-way go here. Baker in motion. Oh, handoff, and it is Avery. And Avery is in. Touchdown, Jags. Terrion Avery takes it in after the 49-yard grab by Jalen Wayne set it up. This game couldn't have started off any better offensively for South Alabama. This offensive line that they challenged is great combination blocks, and the sustaining backside was the difference there. Botch on the hold on the PAT, snap down, hold down, and the PAT is good. So 13 nothing South Alabama. The Jags ready to roll in Hattiesburg. Carter, what got this play jump started was Trotter to Jalen Wayne showing tremendous concentration to track that ball over his back, and it ends up leading to the touchdown we just saw with tremendous push off that left side of the offensive line. Tyler Jernigan, that left guard spot, Wyatt Green, and center Brian Ankerson more than doing their job up front. The big guys getting it done. I mentioned Jernigan in left guard. He gets a start because Hayden Merchant and Trey Simpson both injured. So uh, South Alabama shuffled its offensive line this week in order to get ready for the opener, and they are pushing around the Golden Eagles early on. The coaches told us they struggled a little bit early on in camp. Their defense was able to take advantage of them. There were some question marks around this group and this offense and whether or not they were going to be able to do enough to allow Trotter to wheel and deal to his receivers like he's done so far. And this is a South Alabama offense that over half the all-purpose yards taken in special teams from Trey Minter, who was an electric playmaker for South Alabama. So, I mean, they had to retool big time as well without Minter. He was a weapon. Touchback, bring it out to the 25 for the Golden Eagles with South Alabama up 13-0. Sunday night, 8 Eastern, CBS Sports Network hits the hardwood for a WNBA showdown in the bubble. The Chicago Sky battle Candace Parker and the Los Angeles Sparks on CBS Sports Network. Watching WNBA this summer with my March Madness partner, Debbie Antonelli, the dream getting a big win over Liberty earlier tonight on CBS Sports Network. Meanwhile, Jack Abraham and the Southern Miss Golden Eagles need to get some offense rolling. 41 so far, and on the ground, only one rushing yard, and you can turn that into a minus as Frank Gore Jr. is greeted by a group of Jags and dropped by Kelvin Johnson leading the way. Jeremiah Littles watch them stunt to their left southern miss is right there's no running lanes and then coming off the outside edge is kelvin johnson to force it back inside this is the exact sort of production that you want up front to stifle that running game nasty in that tackle there from kelvin johnson southern miss looks lost up front a first quarter owned by the jags abraham and the golden eagles trying not done so far. Brownlee, the intended receiver, and then Ryan Melton, who got the start at corner tonight. West Point, Mississippi. Seeing receivers on both sides of the football tonight, having some concentration drops. The ball's in their hand, but maybe being too excited because they're here early trying to turn and run. 
before they've secured the catch. I'll say this about Jack Abraham, the veteran quarterback, visiting with a longtime voice of the Golden Eagles, John Cox, said, biggest thing about the young man you need to know is with this young group of receivers, he's been out there throwing late every day. So trying to get the rhythm down, and yet there is little rhythm for Jack Abraham and the Golden Eagles. Janarius Johnson gets the sack. Janarius Johnson filling in the shoes for last year for Sean Brown, who's a big 325-pounder. They're just rushing three, but look at the push and the bull rush. Stays alive, is able to disengage and take Abraham to the ground. Say it again. <laughs> Janarius Johnson representing Gulfport, Mississippi. The two biggest question marks for South Alabama coming into this season have answered the call mightily here early. And that leads you to a 13-0 start for South Alabama. Before the punt from Hunt, it is the end of the first quarter. This is the end of the first quarter. A college football season and a college football game day unlike any other. That is the end of the first quarter. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by GEICO. South Alabama 13-0 on Southern Miss here at The Rock. Time now for some fast facts brought to you by Tums. Yes, Robert Stadium, but everyone calls it The Rock. Why do we tell you the distance from Austin, Texas, 596 miles? Well, Austin, Texas is my home. For family reasons, I chose to drive from Austin to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So this is the ballet star, oh. Lucille Blackburn, waving bye-bye to dad. As you drive down the road with the Spanish moss hanging from the trees. With a little stop on the north shore of oh. Lake Pontchartrain, uh, Fountain Blue State Park, right down the road from Alan Thrifley Art talented statistician so it was last year we opened in Oahu this year rolling past Lake Pontchartrain on the way to Hattiesburg Mississippi to the rock and I tell you what it, our and I'm not just saying this our entire CBS sports team everyone has gone literally the extra mile for the health and safety of all of us and it is greatly greatly appreciated we we love this we love the opportunity to do it and we love the fact that everyone at cbs sports ending with sean mcmanus and david burson and everyone at cbs sports has been extremely supportive of the health and safety measures amen. mason hunt side of the foot yeah amen amen to that carter and when it rains it pours for southern miss but that last drive man South Alabama was all about it, getting the football to Tolbert, being able to deliver some deep balls, hitting number four, Jalen Wayne. And then it was the offensive line in this back by committee, Terry and Avery putting things down to cap off a 99-yard drive, Carter. This offense is light years ahead of where it was a season ago. So field position better this time for the Jags. Trotter, hands off, hole on the right side, closes quickly. Now, Wilson wasn't sure whether he got stopped or not, but he is brought down. Josh Ratcliffe, Barnes there for the Golden Eagles, Tyler Barnes. Barnes came up and brought it right there. That was a nice physical tackle, and that's what this defense needs for Southern Miss. They need some sort of juice play, a spark play. Another turnover because right now the Jags seem pretty confident in what they can run, especially when they take deep shots. And yardage dominant by South Alabama. That one is tipped, and there's your spark. It is picked off, intercepted. Barnes has the INT. This is when keeping it real goes wrong, running play action with that split flow zone, bringing the tight end Brandon Crum across the back side of the offense. Just some late pressure there, and Barnes with back-to-back -back nice plays, the exact spark we were just talking about. So the second pick by the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, and don't think I missed, when keeping it real goes wrong. Huh? <laughs> that play action was working wonders for him, but the tight end coming across missed the edge pressure, which forced the interception. 
A bad night thus far for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Can Jack Abraham try and turn it around? Complete on the edge, slipping away. That's Antavius Willis, the redshirt freshman. Camden, Mississippi with a nice wiggle after the grab. Kelvin Johnson was there to clean it up after he broke free there. If you're Southern Miss, that's what you should do. Get the ball out of the quarterback hands quickly into your playmakers and let them make people miss in space. Force South Alabama to tackle you. Second and two. Hand off, just enough. Frank Gore Jr. has the first down as the Golden Eagles yet again try to get something going. I mean, thanks to a sack on the rush yards, it was minus 10 rushing yards prior to that first down carry by Gore. But the running game is something that often takes time. You can't abandon it and panic. You have to take those body blows. That's a great conversion right there. Get the true freshman in there. Let him get acclimated to the speed of the game so he can settle down. They can turn this thing on. Fake it, toss it. That's Willis again. Willis across the 45. Golden Eagles out to near midfield. Second grab of the drive as Southern Miss tries to get it into the hands of Antavius Willis. That goes for 16. The redshirt freshman doing a good job again of catching and running after the catch. I like the strategy here by Southern Miss, dealing the ball quickly, getting it out of the quarterback's hands. So off the second takeaway from the Southern Miss D. There's Matt Kubik. Said we'll see a whole lot of 12 personnel. Two tight ends. Now you're down 13 nothing, but you're advocating Ragsdale. You're advocating exactly that. Stick with the run no matter what. You, you can't run counter anything up inside if there's penetration. South Alabama, again, a season ago, the strength was up front, but they haven't skipped a beat. There's a lot of young faces in there that are getting the job done and winning their matchup. That makes it extremely hard to run the football game and even harder for Kubik to call it. Great shot there, Bryce Foxworth, 68. They need him to start turning it on. Abraham fakes it, toss it out of the backfield. That's Gunter, the tight end with a flag down. Gunter gets to the 45. Grad transfer from Arkansas. Now we check the flag. It's going to be a holding on McCoy, number 87. Was in good position, but grabbed at the very end. Holding offense number 87 10 yard penalty we play second down you get the holding calls every time you're out there all by yourself in the open field if you restrict the movement of the defender they're going to see it every time you see the center judge right there looking at that left hand impeding the defender who's trying to get free that's an easy one. that's a, that's a textbook hold in space his hands were inside but still you got to know how to play it and when to let go made a living on that. I was going to say, <laughs> spoken like literally a true professional. On second and 18, Abraham on the roll. Complete across the 50-yard line. Tim Jones holds it in near the 49, and Melton makes the stop. Tim Jones, Mr. Reliable, I like the strategy here. Get the ball out of the quarterback hand. Let Abraham break the pocket, change his release point. And force South Alabama to continue to tackle. He's getting into a nice rhythm here. They really need to convert this third down. Can they protect? Jack to the sideline. And Kubik before third and eight. Here comes the pressure. Abraham steps up, delivers downfield. to Tim Jones, the preseason all-conference USA receiver, makes the grab. This was an incredible adjustment back to the ball by Jones. Great concentration, really nice covered that time, coverage by Flanord. But Jones, the trusty receiver, comes through big time. 47 yards, sets up first and goal. Abraham snaps it, hands to Ragsdale. Nothing doing on the left side. Melton makes the stop. Second and goal. Some shoving. And they're going to let that one go for now from Bryce Foxworth. That's the guy that brings some nasty. This is where your offensive line needs to take over. You get inside the five yard line. You want to exert your will. This would be a tremendous confidence booster if they could cap this drive off on the ground. Let's see 
what the offensive coordinator Matt Kubik dials up here. Remember, Abraham has some mobility. Abraham's going to hand off to Ragsdale, spinning, pushing. Ragsdale is in. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Off the interception by Tyler Burns, taking it away from the Jags. The second takeaway turns into a touchdown for the Golden Eagles. Just good, hard, physical running and a missed tackle there at the point of attack. The flow is there, but it's the desire and want to to get the nose of the football just to break the plane of the goal line before his knee touches that seals the deal. You talk about sticking to the run game and pays off with a rushing touchdown. The first for Ragsdale, the transfer from Hines Community College. So Ragsdale into the end zone, PAT is good. So the second INT thrown by Desmond Trotter turns into points. Barnes takes it away. The big play from Jones sets up the touchdown run from Don Ragsdale. Southern on the board at the Rock. So some of the safety protocols in college football for those choosing to play, you coaches and staff wearing the facial coverings, but we're showing you here is that the sidelines have been extended to allow for social distancing on the sidelines as much as possible. They move out from the 25 yard line down to the 15 yard line. You can see this area right there. Oh, that's and what you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I got a twofer, Carter, a twofer. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, no question who was uh, winning the facial hair competition <laughs> tonight. I mean, that is uh, that is outstanding work from Andrew Zink. Kind of feeling the uh, the Magnum P.I. look you're rocking tonight, though. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, you having fun? I am having fun, buddy. It's good to be back. It's good to be back with you watching ball. These guys are settling down and they're going to give us a good game. Woo, and they're hitting on the kickoff return. Baker is wrestled down near the 13-yard line, leading us right to our player profile, brought to you by Corona P C Premier and Kawan Baker, an explosive playmaker. He had teeny plays of 74 and 75 yards last year. Yeah, he led the team in receptions and receiving yards in his top 10 in 10 different scoring categories. He's been Mr. Reliable, and when he's got the ball in his hands, he's been effective on the ground as well. And yet, because of the good kick coverage by Southern Miss, it is Desmond Trotter and South Alabama who's backed up. Brooks makes the stop on first down. The jet sweep game to the wide receivers forces defenses to flatten out. That can also open things back up inside. So not surprised that Kenny Edenfield, the offensive coordinator, is going to the old reliable. That's usually where we see Kawan Baker making his presence felt. But second and four, your playbook's wide open. They love the situation they're in right here. And with a six-yard gain from Lacey on the ground. This is Davis who finds the edge. Tiptoeing on the sideline out to the 30. So they were backed up to the 13. And because, again, of the effective running game for South Alabama, roll it. Keep your eye right here on Tyler Jernigan. Gets the reach on the wide three technique. Gets his head across and gives up a little ground, but puts enough pressure on the defender to allow Carlos Davis to get the first down over the outside. That's a gain of eight. 14 rushing yards on the last two plays. Jernigan got the start at left guard because of a couple injuries. Pass to the outside. That is Wayne who makes the grab. He is met immediately and dropped down by Scott, but it's still a gain of six. We've seen Trotter take some deep shots downfield, but that's the third or fourth ball that he's thrown to the perimeter that's kind of floated and taken some time. I wouldn't be surprised before this game is over if we don't see Southern Miss try to jump one of those out routes. Already two picks for the Golden Eagle defense. Last one turned into the Southern Miss touchdown. Rodder threw only two picks last year in the eight games he played. And off, this is Carlos Davis against to the 40-yard line with a good block by Tyre on the edge. That's a gain of five. Swayze Bozeman. Offensive line now. They're running some stretch plays to get 
Southern Miss running in space, and these backs are putting their foot in the ground to get north and south. High snap, Trotter handles it. Play action. Floats it to the outside. That is caught across the 50 yard line into Golden Eagle territory. Kawan Baker. First down for the Jags. Gain of 11. That's one of the things that Southern Miss defensive coordinator Tony Pecoraro said that Trotter does best is throw on the move. That's beautiful touch, allowing Baker to catch it in stride to move the sticks. A lot of substitutions with these guys in and out conditioning a yeah. challenge for both these teams. Trotter's going to give it to Avery who had the touchdown run and a tough run for Terry on Avery on first down. Avery had some nice bursts there. Defensive lineman number 95 Andrew Cole for Southern Miss won his matchup at the point of attack but couldn't close and make the tackle for loss in the backfield. Seventh play of the drive to start it back at the 13. Had a 99 yard drive in South Alabama. Second, their second touchdown. With the way they're running the football, second and four at this field position, this is a perfect shot for a deep shot. Trotter is going to pull it. Trotter slips away, gets a block on the edge. Trotter knocked out of bounds near the 30 yard line. What a play by Desmond Trotter. This play was dead in the water, but that shows you how athletic Trotter is. It was a busted play. There was some pressure off the side, but right there he pulls it, runs away from two defenders, and a great block right there by Tolbert springs him for another first down. Oh, don't you know his quarterback loves that? The star wide receiver blocking on the edge for the QB. Ain't nothing better than receivers that can block. Have a Golden Eagle who is down. That is Hayes Maples. And as he's held back to the sideline, we step aside. Hayes Maples, the sophomore linebacker who is from Hattiesburg, getting attention from the training staff and the equipment staff on the Southern Miss sideline after he was injured on this play, going after Desmond Trotter. Trying to make a physical play out there on the outside edge. He's a backup linebacker. These last couple weeks, there's been six Southern Miss players that opted out as we take a look at the offensive coordinator for South Alabama, Kidding Edenfeld, who's got to be pretty excited about what his offense has been able to do, particularly on this series, by dialing up that run game. Minus the two mistakes by Trotter with the interceptions, they played pretty well. He was at Troy for 10 years, his alma mater. Trotter looks like another busted play, so he just dumps it back to the line of scrimmage incomplete. He was chased off the edge by Eric Scott Jr. coming on the Cowboy. That corner blitz off the outside edge, and credit Trotter. It was a busted play right there, but just thinking heads up and being quick gets rid of the football and avoids the sack. Yeah, he, always watch that boundary cat, Carter. Mm -hmm, yeah. Got to watch the Cowboy and the cat. Especially the Cat Cowboy. Trotter pull this one. He takes a pop on second ten. That's Avery Hava, sophomore from Rice Lake, Wisconsin, Iowa Western Community College. So he actually has three years of eligibility, and they think Hobbes is going to be really good. Carter, take a, yeah, yeah, take perfect. A, yeah, take a look at this. They're perfect tonight on third down. They were dead last in the Sun Belt a season ago, but they're keeping it to third and manageable, and Trotter's done a really nice job of moving the sticks when they get an opportunity. There were only six teams worse in the FBS on third down last year. And yet perfect start in 2020 for Trotter and the Jags. Going to get a timeout Southern Miss prior to Time this. Timeout Southern Miss, their first. Third and three. You know, this is the, the second time the Jags seconds. have been backed up. First time on a 99-yard drive. I mean, Trotter was red hot to start. And he got that ball to Jalen Tolbert, and this gave everybody confidence. This offense wanted to start quickly, and they did just that. The concentration and body control by Wayne. But then it was the ill-advised decision, kind of playing three flies up in the double coverage, then hit as he throws for the second interception based on a missed block by the backside tight end. It's been a little bit of a mixed bag statistically, but again, you remove those two interceptions, one of which he was hit as he thrown. 
He's done a pretty dang good job running this offense, and his receivers that are the strength of this unit have more than bailed him out. I tell you what, you go 99 yards on, on a touchdown drive for South Alabama. Now this drive started at the 13, so they have moved the football out of some difficult situations against the Golden Eagles. There's six minutes left in the second quarter, and they've got 250 yards of offense against a defense that hasn't finished worse than third in the last five years in conference. And a handoff on third and three. Davis trying to find the edge. He is wrestled down and dropped. Malik Shorts, the sophomore, strong safety from Bassfield, Mississippi, with Maples. Yeah, he got himself healthy, got back in and made a play. This is decision time for South Alabama with the way your defense is playing. Do you take a chance here and try and convert? or attempt your first field goal of the offseason. That's the first tackle for loss today by Southern Miss. Walhardo on for the field goal, and it is no good from 46. That is Walhardo's first field goal attempt. He kicked off last year on Walhardo attempting the 46-yarder. And good news for the Golden Eagles. Nothing more on the board. Still 13-7, Jazz. Let's take a look at the AP poll powered by Ram Trucks. So these are the AP top 25 teams who are not playing this fall, and maybe we should say yet. Nine of the top 25 and three of the top 10. Just one of the many ways that this season is bizarre. And to your point about yet, the Pac-12 and Big Ten postponing their season. There's been rumors and talk about whether or not they play this fall in October or November or December 1st. But in a season that has been uncertain with some unprecedented things, that first top 25 in the state of college football and whether you have two playoffs or not, can you get a full spring season in? What happens to the players that are draft eligible? Lots to chew on. It's Gore who has the first down carry. 25% capacity here at the Rock Roberts Stadium, but it is going to be a challenge throughout college football to make all of those determinations for every conference, every school. And we are just at the beginning. On the field, Gore picks up 11. Give it right back to him. So Gore gets six more. Take it to the 45, and you can feel the flow from Frank Gore Jr. They're going to the big boy football up front. That was a wham play where you bring the tight end and lead him up through on the nose tackle to get a double team at the point of the attack. Gore puts his foot in the ground and squirts forward for a nice pickup. After South Alabama has dominated, no points on the last drive, and the Golden Eagles a chance to tie or take the lead before halftime after they have had very little going on the offensive side. This front seven of South Alabama makes a nice adjustment there. Southern Miss is only one for four on third down tonight because their average distance to go has almost been 11 yards. This is a third and three they've got to get. And with the way this offensive line's playing, I'd say turn around and hand it off and let them pick it up. Timeout. Second used by Southern Miss Time prior out. to this third and three. It'll be 30 seconds. And a veteran quarterback, I mean, that's, that's you know this is a critical third down. I mean, you, you drive, take this one in, you can get back-to-back -back TDs, and Southern Miss is right there in the bowl game. So critical third down, Abraham uses the timeout. It's been an up-and-down night. Certainly the last drive ended the way that you want it to. But to your point, this is a critical point in the ball game. This Southern Miss team, really on both sides of the ball, has been kind of listless, trying to find its way. Both these coaching staffs talking about you got to bring your own juice. The defense has done that, getting a couple interceptions. But offensively, I'm a little surprised at how much Southern Miss has struggled to move the football tonight. This reminds me, if you had a juice draft, which juice would you take in the first round? Pineapple orange is hard to beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. They make good ghetto popsicles. <laughs> <kids> <laughs> So out of the timeout, third and three with four minutes to go. And, you know, you, you have that feeling for South Alabama. Everything 
I mean, yeah, Trotter's thrown two picks, but everything has been rolling for the Jags. Big third down both sides. On third and three, perfectly designed. Gunner has it, takes it inside the 40. First down, Southern Miss. Beautiful play. Beautiful design there, and Gunter sitting in that wing spot. There's going to be some pressure off that outside edge, which frees Gunner up. Just a quick pitch and catch. And when Southern Miss gets the football out of Abraham's hands quickly, they're efficient. Gunner, the former Arkansas Razorback. Immediate impact for the Golden Eagles. Abraham and Southern Miss starting to feel it. Handles the low snap, hands off. Gore, Jags rally to the football. Jamie Sheriff, who started at defensive end, in there on the tackle to Shazer as well. Low snaps are tough because it throws off the timing of the play. I don't know if it would have mattered there because the Jags defense were canceling gaps left and right, leaving the backs nowhere to run. Well, Trace Clopton and Jack Abraham have been doing this for a while. Clopton started at center since day one as a Golden Eagle. Played for his dad, Tommy, in high school. And off again, Gore, nothing there, and now you got third and nine. He's got unblocked defenders off that backside. Number 11, Jamie Sheriff, a Juco transfer. Nobody picks him up. The tight end, I don't know if he was supposed to get him coming across on the split flow zone, but you can't have somebody as big as Sheriff unblocked, or that's going to be the result. Officially call it third and eight on a gain of one from Gore. Williams goes in motion. Abraham keeper on third and eight. Uh, we'll see. I don't mind that play call there, Carter. And you know what? Correction here. Rather than Abraham, it was Watley on the carry. So that's Tate Watley, the junior, who's in on... Before the ball is snapped, timeout, South Alabama, oh, wow. they're second. So that was Wadley who be 30 seconds. relieved the injured Jack Abraham in the Armed Forces Bowl, separated shoulder, and Wadley and the offense struggled in that game, but Southern Miss does plan on using Wadley in certain packages. However, timeout granted to South Alabama, and now we're going to have third and eight again. South Alabama wanted an opportunity to be able to talk about it. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 2 minutes 58 seconds. 2 minutes 58 seconds on the game clock, please. Now, as much as, as much as we enjoy talking football with South Alabama defensive coordinator Greg Stewart, there was also a maybe even lengthier discussion <laughs> about fishing and and Aaron Taylor and Greg Stewart could talk fishing all day, I guarantee. Well, we had our Zoom call, right? So my screensaver on Zoom is a picture of me and my son sitting on top of a boat, and you can just see our legs, but it's clear that we're offshore. Coach Stewart recognized it right away, and we just led right into fishing. He's all excited about the new 22-foot cobia he's going to get, which is a nice offshore fishing boat. But, man, we did have a good conversation. Fishing's another one of those things. It's a great unifier, just like football. Man, and you did some serious fishing these past few months. I mean, I, I think regardless, you're doing serious fishing, but I saw some pretty amazing picks. We're seeing some unprecedented bluefin fishing in San Diego. These fish have never been in our waters, but for the last five or six years, we had a run there with a couple of my buddies on the Sophia Rose where we hammered them. Mm. We caught five fish up to 220 pounds, all bluefin on three consecutive trips. It was as good a fishing as I've ever had. The best the best sushi restaurant in uh, San Diego is Aaron Taylor's house. Now there's discussion about this timeout. And Jay Hobson wants to get clarification as exactly where this timeout came from. There it is. Timeout granted. A good clarification because Jay Hobson wasn't sure where that timeout came from. So discuss it. All right. Timeout granted. Makes sense. Now. The question becomes, who's your quarterback and what's your right. next play call here? So who is your quarterback and what's your next play call here? It's so, going to be Abraham. So now you have to respect his ability to throw the football, but just like we saw with Watley, Abraham can run. But these young receivers need to step up and make a play. Again, it's been the balls that get out of his hand quickly. 
that have been the most effective. Southern Miss crowding the line of scrimmage. Maybe wanting to make him throw this ball more quickly. Only rush three, though. Abraham completes. That's Jones slipping free inside the 25-yard line. Tim Jones on the pass from Abraham. Gain of 12, first down, Southern Miss. Great job of Jones getting open, sitting right over the spot of the ball. Abraham dumps it off to him, and then a missed tackle right there in the middle allows Jones to move the sticks. Tackling been an issue on both sides of the football. But a huge conversion to keep this drive alive by the Golden Eagles. Darrell Luter Jr. finally finishes off the tackle. The junior corner from Hattiesburg. So after the first touchdown drive, it was a TD run by Ragsdale. On the ground, Gore trying to find the edge. Gore wrestled down on the edge. That's Luter. Again, a corner, but Gore manages to fall forward. So Luter had him wrapped up, but still positive run for Frank Gore Jr. Coker right, the right guard, number 60. Keep your eye on him. If you can see him squirt out, he gets a pancake right there. And just enough to let Gore put his foot in the ground and get to the outside. That's the explosiveness and being able to create something out of nothing that these coaches have been raving about. Gore is the run game right now for Southern Miss. Set it up on the screen for Jones. Looter there to blow it up, however. Fighting through. Jones gets seven, gets it to the 11. And so it will be first and 10, just outside the 10. Down here in the red zone, I'm not surprised to see that. Coaches always say it's not about plays, it's about players. Get the football into the hands of your best players. And on the outside, what we've seen so far, that's 21, Frank Gore Jr. And number five, Tim Jones. Tenth play of the drive. Abraham fakes it, tosses it. That's Willis with a block on the edge. Willis takes it down to the six-yard line. McCoy with a good block for Antavius Willis. You're getting down here with almost a minute under the second, a minute left in the second quarter. Both these teams with one timeout. Southern Miss not really in a hurry. Bleed the clock. You've got some time, second and five. They can still pick up a first down. Eight straight completions from Abraham. And now Gore pushing. Takes three and he shovels it. Abraham, touchdown. Gore to Abraham. Golden Eagle, touchdown. Frank Gore Jr. with the fabulous football instincts. Coaches the told us the runner's forward progress was stopped before the backward pass. They're oh. down. So bring it back. That would be a killer. Coaches told us that Gore just has a knack and a feel for the game. That is an ill-advised play, but one you can only make if you're confident and know what it takes to win, to have the wherewithal to look up here, see a defender in your face and pitch the ball to your quarterback. To be even able to do that as a true freshman is remarkable, but unfortunately, this one's coming back off the board. Oh, my goodness. That, I mean, you can understand why Jay Hobson is upset because that one was blown dead forward progress, so wipe it out. So that's one of that's one of the better football plays that won't result in the touchdown. I mean, I understand you want to protect a football Got ball. Southern Miss, their second. And what's interesting, Carter, is remember the officials this year are going to the electronic whistles. Correction, Southern Miss is third and final timeout. Mm. And they said that they were putting them on their hips specifically so that they wouldn't be in a rush to be able to hit the buzzer in their hand and be too quick with the whistles. Let's listen. I, we didn't hear it. Now again, different whistles, electronic whistles. It's different. Technology is different. But we've heard whistles. Did not hear one there. And you can understand why Jay Hobson is hot about that because you take a touchdown off the board. That's got to be frustrating, especially a heads-up play by the true freshman to give his team a chance to take the lead here. 
at the end of the second quarter. And now you got to regroup and get ready for third and four. Southern Miss. Using your tight end down here, play action. You've got to take a shot at the end zone. If you get stopped before you go in, it's going to be virtually impossible, or very difficult rather, to, to get another playoff. Look for Abraham to throw the football, maybe off a of play action, trying to get it into Tim Jones or to his tight end's hands. All right, third and four, 25 seconds left in the half. Jones here in the slot. Abraham on the roll. Gets chip. Abraham is just going to roll out of bounds. 19 seconds, stopping 18 seconds, fourth down. And we'll see if the kicking unit comes out. I mean, you would think you'd take the points at this point. In fact, they will. Andrew Stein will come on to kick. But so the, the touchdown wiped off because of the forward progress stopped on that Gore to Abraham. And you know that one's going to burn. Uh, for hops into the Golden Eagles. Burn big time, but this is the right decision to kick this field goal. They can get to 10 points, and remember, Southern Miss gets the ball to start the second half. And it's Bouzois who comes on for the field Illegal goal. Illegal substitution. Attempt. Kicking team had more than 11 players in the formation. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Not a big deal. Five yards maybe even makes it a little oh. bit easier for Bouzois there. But clock rather was that clock was not right. Rather than Stein coming out, who handled the placements last year, Bourgeois will come out for just his third field goal attempt, 25 yard. It's good, three on the board. But rather than a touchdown on the flip from Gore to Abraham, that would have given Southern Miss a shot at the PAT to take the lead. It's three more on the board. The incredible touchdown that was not to be for Frank Gore Jr. and Jack Abraham. Three more for Southern Miss. 13-10. Jags on top. We're waning right now. Look at you waxing poetic about the waning move. The second quarter is also waning. 13 nothing start for South Alabama. Touchdown on the ground for Southern Miss to get it started with Don Ragsdale. Almost had another one on the ground, but then wiped off because Frank Gore Jr. before the flip was ruled down. Forward progress stopped. So three more on the board. And Jags will have another chance of 14 seconds if they want to try it again. Uh, be caught by the 28, so keeping it out of the hands of Tolbert, especially late in the half on the kickoff from Bourgeois. So coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, join Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones. Gets caught up on everything college football related. The other matchup tonight between a Conference USA team and a Sunbelt team. Game Central Arkansas operator, please, and please. UAB has turned into a shootout. So all that and important updates. Including their conversation with Pac-12 Commissioner Larry Scott earlier tonight. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. New quarterback for South Alabama. This is Chance Lovertich. So... We'll see what they do with him, but the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College transfer. Bulldogs went 12 and 0, Juco, Juco National Championship. And they like Lovertich, so they will play him. Caught on the edge, out of bounds. Wayne makes the grab. And Lovertich is a weapon as well. They love that he can play. He's not that big, but they like the way that he can deal the football. How about the confidence with 14 seconds here? in the half to go. They let him throw on his first play of the season as well as this game. Remember, with the one time out there, they can take some deep shots if they get it over the middle. But you'd have to imagine. Oh, oh almost picked by Maple. So five seconds. You factor into this for South Alabama. This may be where you take a knee because you don't have much confidence in your kicking game in Wajardo. I mean, the, the kicking game has really been a struggle the last couple of years for South Alabama. So when you factor that in five seconds, we'll see. Maybe you take a shot, but 
after that was nearly picked. <laughs> Go ahead and kneel this one out and jog it on out and regroup. And that looks like exactly what they're going to do. That last pass was ill advised. Not a good decision there. Certainly not. So take the lead Very to the half. Good. Yeah, South Alabama got off to the 13 nothing start. 10 unanswered for Southern Miss. But for the Jags, a solid start to 2020. Steve Campbell has to be pleased with a three point lead on the road. So coming up, we'll send you to the Verizon halftime report here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 13 10 college football on CBS Sports Network presented by Geico. A 13 nothing start for South Alabama. It's a three point game at the half. Carter Blackburn with Aaron Taylor here in Hattiesburg Mississippi in some special accommodations provided by CBS Sports. Make sure we're socially distant and safe calling a football game. And I tell you what yeah it was 13 nothing in South Alabama really everything went right. Now you're in a three point game of the half and feels a little different. Yeah Southern Miss started crawling their way back into this game and you really get the sense that if they can settle down at halftime they could really hit the gas pedal here in the second half. So the first half highlights will show you that it was South Alabama coming out firing Desmond Trotter the big 73 yard TD to Tolbert. This was one of the early plays in the game a couple missed tackles and then it was Trotter's legs to extend drives. They were excellent early on on third down going three for three to start this ball game but some late pressure he's hit as he throws. This is what gets Southern Miss back into the game. Ragsdale converts that interception into a touchdown. They kick a field goal right before halftime and we're locked up 10 to 13. Turnovers not really being too problematic for the Jaguars leading to one touchdown. But keep your eye on that time of possession. The Jags defense has been on the field a lot longer than Southern Misses. First half stats brought to you by DiGiorno. Ironic that Southern Misses touchdown was a rushing touchdown because only 25 rushing yards in the first half and one of those quirky numbers 29 rushing yards for Frank Gore Jr. But you, you take out some sacks of that. They, the team wise they have less rushing yards than Frank Gore Jr. has. But it will be Southern Miss football to begin the second half. South Alabama out of the Sun Belt. They won only one Sun Belt game last year, but it was their closer against a good Arkansas State team. They jumped out early against the Golden Eagles. Let it go for a touchback, bring it out to the 25 yard line on the kickoff from Wajardo. So Jack Abraham, the fifth year senior who is from Oxford, Mississippi, three straight state title games as quarterback of the Oxford High School Chargers. Actually lost all three, but Louisiana Tech, Northwest Mississippi Community College with one of his uh, former high school coaches. And then now on to Southern Miss. He's had a remarkable Southern Miss career, avoided an interception in that first half. And that was the big mark that you had for Jack Abraham. He's been dealing tonight. 12 for 14, 162 yards. Look for more of him to Tim Jones. Abraham winds up, takes a deep shot to begin the second half. It is knocked away, incomplete. No flags. He was looking for Jones and knocked away by Ryan Melton. Ending the streak of eight straight completions. Melton is what you call in phase. Got that right arm wrapped around. Tim Jones's left arm interfering with the catch, but because of his proximity being shoulder to shoulder, they don't throw the flag there. It's a savvy, subtle technique there by the DB. That's a big time breakup from Melton. Gore gets it on second and ten, and he's dropped for a loss immediately after Gore grabs it. He is down. Maurice Strong Jr., the sophomore defensive end, tackle for loss. Defensive end was a position that they were hit hard with a season ago. But Strong coming from that backside. Believe he's right here. Keep your eye just closing and squeezing the gap. Sees the tackle disappear, comes off that backside. A man that big is not expected to be able to tackle the back, being unblocked from that backside, but the big dude is hunting. On third and long, Abraham pressured, release is incomplete. The pressure forced him to get rid of it as Jones was dragging. And Jones would have had a catch and run. And Riley Cole gets the pressure. Riley Cole was a very savvy pass rusher a season ago. Played outside linebacker. This year they moved him inside, but on passing situations, still like him to come off that outside edge. 
Defensive coordinator Greg Stewart telling us in 30 years that he's been coaching, Cole has the best motor he's ever seen. That's amazing. I don't know if there's a better compliment from a coach to a player than to respect his tenacity and want to. Riley Cole's already earned his degree as well. Hunt had some struggles in the first half. This one hits around the 44. It'll be down 44 or 43. We will check. So South Alabama football. But Desmond Trotter, this is late in the first half. As we look back at this play, uh, it was Maples who left the game, but looks like Trotter may have taken a pop. So then right before the start of the second half, that's Trotter trying to get it warmed up. But you can see that Trotter clearly something bothering him there. So keep an eye on that and also keep an eye on Chance Lovertich. He had the last series of the first half, but it is Trotter winding up again and heaving long. Batted away, incomplete. It was intended for Tolbert. And Eric Scott Jr. breaks it up. Scott Jr. has been on fire tonight, is able to close on this football. Look at the eyes and the concentration, gets his hands to be able to break the pass up. But Tolbert, who's got some pretty strong hands, but both of these offenses coming out early on first down, mm -hmm. taking some deep shots, but good defensive back play nullified the result. Trout is going to hand off on second down. Slipping away, Carlos Davis. Davis takes it across midfield. Fight for the football at the end. Hemby says he had it. We'll see if they mark Davis down before Hemby comes away with the football. That's Kyle Hemby, the all-conference free safety. Running on the field as the runner was down before the ball came loose. First down. Eludes two defenders. The third one hits him. It's hard to see from that angle. Jags may want to snap this. Move tire into the backfield, snap it. Now it's in the books. Give it to Davis. Trying to find the corner again. Davis brought down by Maples. Nothing doing on first down. Something looked off on the timing there with the mesh between Trotter and the back. Is 32 Hayes yeah. Maples coming up a little gimpy again. Remember, he got injured early on in the yeah. first quarter. First half, and he goes down. Something's not right grabbing that right knee. This will be the second time that Hayes Maples has had to go to the Southern Miss sideline. We haven't seen Swayze Bozeman in a while either. We'll see if there's any update there. Can't see anything really there. There was some torque and twist with the way Davis spun and broke to the inside, but he's walking off on his own power, and that's always a good sign. You know, Carter, injuries have been one of the things I've been curious about as this season goes on with no spring practice, limited or interrupted fall preparation. You wonder if there's going to be more soft tissue injuries just from lack of use. Football is a sport that requires you to become calloused to get your body conditioned to take the pounding that goes on. We haven't seen that much here tonight, but something to keep our eye on this season. Trotter hit as he throws, completes, delivers to Baker with a stiff arm, takes it to near the 35. I'm Kawan Baker. Good effort from both Trotter and Baker. Good release backside by Trotter to come and get himself open. Beautiful ball right there on the hip, a little bit behind, but that's the second time they've run that to Baker, and the second time they've been successful. Tyreek Moody makes a stop, gain of seven. Throwing on the move is not easy for a lot of quarterbacks to do, but Trotter makes it seem like it is. Trotter hit as he throws again. That was nearly another pick. It was low. Trotter was drilled. Brooks nearly had the third pick off of Desmond Trotter. It's fourth down. That's unfortunate, a third and three situation, but there was a lot of confusion. Looked like the right side of that offensive line thought that there was going to be offsides or something, but South Alabama's thinking about going for this. With the way their offense has been humming, I like this decision. Be aggressive. This is a three-point ball game, but to do so, get Trotter outside the pocket in case nothing's there. He can pick it up with his legs. Still haven't punted tonight, South Alabama. Play clock winding. Three seconds, two. 
They get it off. Trotter completes. And it is a fourth down conversion. Baker has it, and he's still on his feet. Baker inside the 20, wrestled out of bounds. A tough tackle from Malik Shorts. Flag is down for now, gain of 20. First down, fourth down conversion. Great catch and run there by the leading receiver from a season ago. Offense number eight. Ten yard penalty, we play fourth down. That's a killer. That's a wide receiver, Jalen Tolbert. Playing with great effort. Coaches were complimenting his ability to be a great blocker and great receiver, but he cost his team big time with that fourth down conversion. And now we'll see if the extra five yards changes your fourth down decision. Steve Campbell. There he is on the hash right there, turns. Right here, very late, with both hands around, just a bad technique, and then bulldogs him down to the ground. Just unnecessary there by Tolbert. All he had to do was splash him or position block him and would accomplish the same thing. So from the spot of the foul, my bad on that fourth down distance you got from the spot of the foul in the hold. So that's why you have fourth down and short. Now, that that doesn't change uh, what you're thinking. It now. doesn't change anything. Please reset the game clock to 11 minutes, 51 seconds. 11.51 on the game clock, please. But I tell you what Thank it you. does do is it changes your thinking on the play call. Instead of throwing the football to Quan Baker, put Carlos Davis in there or sneak this thing. Get it, Jumbo Trotter with a good push, and that's easily a first down for South Alabama. So despite the flag for holding that wiped out the fourth down conversion, they pick it up anyway and keep the drive alive. I can't tell you how much this speaks to the offensive line and the confidence that this staff has in that unit. That was one of the big question marks coming into this game was with these guys, four returning starters, with some new faces with Tyler Jernigan in there, be able to hold up, and they've more than done that. Give it to Davis on first and 10. Carlos Davis. Oh, slips out. How did he get out of there to the 31? Davis kept it alive and just squirmed away from the Golden Eagles. It's a remarkable gain of two. Being stout against the run is what the Golden Eagles do. Some great jobs of getting hats to the football, defeating blocks, crossing faces, but they didn't finish. And because of the second effort by Davis, he gets something out of nothing, which should have been a two or three yard tackle for loss, putting him behind the chains. They get a small pickup out of it. Seven plays. 33 yards so far on this one for South Alabama. And now Trotter, heavy pressure, tries to dump it off. Is that a forward pass or is it a fumble? If it's a fumble, it's Golden Eagle football. They're going to call it incomplete forward pass. Rolling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Looked like he was trying to throw it to his left tackle. I don't know if I saw an eligible receiver there. He's inside the pocket. You have to see if the ball went past the line of scrimmage or it's intentional ground. Well, Jay Hobson wants another look. Well, it looks, I mean, that looked loud. on the field was an incomplete forward pass. The previous play is under video review. It was immediate continuation of play. Carter, I think Southern Miss has a strong argument that that was a lateral and therefore a fumble, which would give them possession. They have turned up the pressure on Trotter. He's made some good decisions. Boy. Yeah, and just when we're complimenting the Jags offensive line, they were extremely porous on that one. The nasty bunch get nasty and putting pressure on the quarterback, which was a strength of theirs last season. All right. It 
Feels like it's the Buffalo Bills. Trying to look at the angle here. That ball looks to be just shy. About the 39 yard line. The ball was snapped on the 42. Remember, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. So they would need indisputable. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this was a tough one to overturn. Really tough. And this, this may be more of a stands rather than confirm situation because if it's forward, it is just slightly forward. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass, third down. That's another tough one for the Golden Eagles. But the call on the field was a pretty immediate, incomplete pass, forward pass, and therefore it will stand. If you're Southern Miss, you're thinking pressure here, third and long. You have to respect Trotter's legs. He can bail outside or through the B gap up vertically, maybe have a spy on him to make sure he doesn't beat you. 10th play of the drive is a deep shot. Trotter, it is hauled in. Tolbert has it. Touchdown, Jags. It's Trotter to Tolbert again. Trotter throws a beautiful deep ball, but how about this route? Beating the one-on-one -on -one coverage and just turns and adjusts to the football. Scott has no idea where it is. That's really hard on him to locate the football. Went right through the hands of Tolbert, but fortunately hit him in the chest. The PAT knuckleballs in. So a 73-yarder for Tolbert earlier. This one goes for 31. The story a year ago was Desmond Trotter taking over this offense, breathing him life. His favorite target was Tolbert, and they picked up right where they left off. Well, Trotter had the hurt shoulder in the second quarter, and question about it, whether he would come back and play in the second half, but as we take a look at our Sonic quarterback comparison, now with the two INTs, you have two TD passes for Desmond Trotter. Take a look at what he's done. He's had some bright spots today, though, as well. Early on, feeding the football to Jalen Tolbert. These two were lockstep at the end of the year against Arkansas State, picked up right where they left off, and then Jalen Wayne shows up and holds his end of the bargain for what ends up being a back shoulder fade. Pushing off Scott, getting himself into the end zone, gives a 10-point lead, and despite the two interceptions, Trotter is maneuvering this offense beautifully. And he loves finding Jalen Tolbert. Those four TD passes in the win at the end of 2019, 0-4 to Tolbert. Two TD passes tonight, both to Tolbert. So Jalen Tolbert now, first time school history players had two plus receiving touchdowns in consecutive games. Jags been playing football since 2009. Short kick, fielded at the 10. Baker slips away across the 25. Baker takes it all the way to the 34-yard line. D. Baker with a good burst. Now, this is the discussion uh, while we were in commercial between Jay Hobson and referee Wayne Winkler. They've had two critical calls go against the Golden Eagles. So you understand why Coach Hobson frustrated. He had the, the flip by Gore to Abraham, wiped out, and then a potential takeaway. And then now an injured player. I believe that's Luter, the corner, playing on special teams, and it is. That's Darrell Luter, Jr., who is from here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And he's played well, but hobbling off after uh, getting banged up on the kick coverage. That's not a good sign, especially considering that Southern Miss is about to be back on offense. Played a critical role in that defensive backfield. 
Going back to Jay Hobson, you're right to be frustrated. There were two critical calls, as you mentioned, and you have to be careful and hold your composure to, so you don't send the wrong message to your players. Abraham, first completion of the second half, but goes for not much on the edge. Demarcus Jones, Jr. from Vicksburg, gets five on first down. Devin Rocket makes a stop. Short, high percentage throws are important to get the drive going. The last drive they started the second half with, they took a deep shot, were behind the chains, ended up going three and out. Here at second and five, playbook's wide open. Abraham will hand off Kevin Perkins, the fifth year senior. I haven't heard much from him tonight. He has a first down. A running back by committee for Southern Miss. It's been a while since they've had Ito Smith, who's now a Falcon. Rush for over 4,500 yards in his Southern Miss career, ending in 2017. So since then, it's been running back by committee for the Golden Eagles. And Perkins is a big load of laundry. He likes his uh, Waffle House. <laughs> Six foot, 234 pound, loves to pound him up inside. Smothered and covered. Abraham back shoulder, knocked away and almost picked. Flanord knocked it away. And it was almost intercepted by Christian Bell. This was just good tight coverage out on the outside edge. Flanord in lockstep with Tim Jones. These two have been battling all night. Maybe those sparkly shoes are helping them get in the hip of that wide receiver. It's got to be the shoes. Kids these days. Oh, there's the jump man. <laughs> Abraham pulls it, tosses it behind. That's a great grab by Jones. He pays the price with a hit from Riley Cole, but he comes back to get it. And he's standing up, grabbing his shoulder. Is Demarcus Jones a little banged up? Took quite the pop here, which is a great play design off the play action. The split flow zone, backers suck up, creates that void for Jones to get the completion. Gain of 10 on the play. Jones headed back to the Golden Eagles sideline. We'll step aside. It's a terrific play by Demarcus Jones to come back, grab the football. That was a gain of 13 on that last grab, but took the hard hit from Riley Cole. So Jones walking through a teammate. Now, meanwhile, for South Alabama, this is Darrell Luter Jr., the junior corner from Hattiesburg, getting help heading to the training room. He was heard on the last kickoff coverage. So that is not a good sign for South Alabama. Luter has played well tonight for them. He's playing in place of the injured Jaden Boyson. He and Melton split the time at quarter at corner. And then Keon Boyson is a safety. Devin Boyson, wide receiver. So tonight for the Jags, two of the three Boyce and brothers are available. You may even see Keon get into the game in the secondary with the departure of Luter. First and 10, Abraham looking for Gunter. It is incomplete. They tried to sneak him out into the flat a couple times tonight and been successful, but that time A.J. DeShazer was all over it. There's also immediate pressure in Abraham's face, so he smartly threw the ball away. A second and ten after an incompletion is typically a down and distance that the defense expects a run so that the play caller can have a manageable third down. Interesting to see what Southern Miss does here. Keep it on the ground. Perkins gets a hole on the right side. Perkins has a first down with a tough stiff arm. He wants to hear it from the Golden Eagle crowd. Got a good block from Jones, too. Gain of 15. Smothered and covered is right. He ran right over Flanord on that one. That was their best run of the night, and it was physical to boot. Just that same counter play that's been stopped so much. No second level straight by the linebackers. To the air. To the end zone. Incomplete. Knocked away. And it's a fight. Rocket. Knocks it away from Brownlee. There is a flag down. For the most part, these officials have been letting these receivers and defensive backs chicken fight their way down the field. 
Pass interference. Defense number five. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. But not anymore. Mm. See Young right there. I don't know. Well, that they said five, but it has to be six. Rocket was there in coverage. It has to be on Rocket. There you go. I mean, there's equal rights to the ball. Maybe the jersey tug. A little bit there at the end and doesn't turn his head around. There's no such thing as face guarding, but this is a heck of an opportunity here for the Eagles. Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. Two trips, one touchdown so far for the Golden Eagles. It was on the ground, had a second one wiped out. Jags rallying to the football, led again by Cole. I mean, if you follow number four for South Alabama, he's going to end up with the football. Now, it's interesting on that last play, Carter. Everybody crashed on the back inside. Abraham was untouched. I don't know if there was somebody supposed to be responsible for him off the outside edge, but they may want to come back to this and run a keeper. He scored on a touchdown on Louisiana Tech that way. That might not be a bad play call down here in the red zone. Gore limps off. Tate Wadley in at quarterback. Wadley going to keep it. Jags were ready. <laughs> they saw what I saw, but to your point, A.J. DeShazer again couldn't be fooled. They were played too late with that play call. If they had just done that to play before, they would have been successful. But that is great force play on the end. Keep everything inside and in front. Get the ball carrier to the ground. Nice job by three. Abraham back in for third down. Abraham throws it out the back of the end zone. Everybody was covered. So South Alabama has stiffened in the red zone now for the second time. They were great a season ago in the red zone, only allowing 56% touchdowns. But that coverage there with the two safeties, there was nowhere for him to throw the football. I almost wondered if Abraham could have tucked that and tried to run up inside. Credit, great coverage there for forcing this field goal attempt. So Bourgeois comes out from 28, hit from 24 earlier. Three on the board for Southern Miss. It's a seven point game, but South Alabama keeps Southern Miss out of the end zone. So instead of a touchdown, Golden Eagles, just three on the board. And the Jags still in control on the road at Hattiesburg. Red zone woes for Southern Miss, helping South Alabama hang on to a 20 to 13 lead time now for tonight's Geico difference makers and some big play wide receivers just like we anticipated. The three-year starter showing up, doing what he's supposed to do on nine targets, has five catches for almost 100 yards, averaging 19 yards per game. And then on the other side, Jalen Tolbert has been on and started early. Five catches, 138 yards, two tugs. And he has been magnificent. Again, last year against Arkansas State, four touchdown receptions, all from Trotter that tied a school record. But he's great in the open field. He's an electric playmaker has the ability to make people miss in space, but tracking the football and playing bigger. He's a tall guy, but he's not real physical. But when that ball is in the air, he comes down with it. Number eight has been special tonight. The junior from Mobile. So that's uh, six TD grabs from Trotter in the last two games. And credit South Alabama for getting the football in his hands, including on special teams. He's back on kickoff return. Bouzois after the field goal. Let's go, let's go. Kickoff. It'll be taken. Baker brings it out. And he gets very little. It's Lacey there who brings it out rather than Baker. But Shorts hustles down and it's another long field for South Alabama. But they have been successful with long fields tonight. Including a 99 yard Touchdown drive, and by the way, that 99-yard drive, first time they've had a 99-yarder since they beat Mississippi State. 
And that's really been the difference tonight is red zone production and conversion. South Alabama's done that. Southern Miss, two long drives coming up with field goals both times, not going to get you a win. So started from the 12. Trotter dealing with the shoulder issue, playing through. Russell down and tremendous pursuit. Wow. Bozeman, no gain. There was some boundary pressure from the quarterback coming off that backside. Trotter feels it effortlessly. Keep your eye here. He comes, and Trotter feels it. He knows to step up. There's nobody back there to block him. The tackle comes off late. He has a great sense and pocket presence, Carter. Really impressive with the way he keeps his eyes downfield. Pressure again. Trotter throws into the pressure. It's hauled in, but nothing there. Excellent tackle in space from Eric Scott Jr. on Jalen Wade. That ball floats out there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no mustard on it. It, yeah. it's, it takes its time. Been saying that since the first half. You know he's got the arm strength downfield, but just not ready to pull the ripcord on those outbreaking routes. Again, that could prove to be an opportunity for Golden Eagles. Southern Miss, a chance to get him three and out. No pressure. Trotter complete. That is first down, South Alabama. They wanted a, well, number one, you want the first down. They were arguing perhaps for face mask, but Crum, the tight end, makes the grab, move the chains. It wasn't a horse collar, but it had the same effect where you get pulled down from your upper body over your legs. Good thing that Crum got his legs out of there. Crum missed the block earlier for the hit that threw the interception. But comes up big there to convert. I'll tell you what, Jag's been masterful on third down tonight. Baker in motion. Fake it to him. Trotter. Complete. This is Wayne. Out to near midfield again to the 45 yard line. And the Jags rolling right now. Gain is 16 for Wayne. This play action really bites on people. You see the great route run there, but you see. The safety and the linebacker bite up on the play action. And now Trotter going long. Flags down. Going to get a pass interference. Looking for Tolbert. Jags hitting the tempo on that offense. Caught me. A mm -hmm. little bit still talking. Trying to catch Southern Miss off guard. Pass and interference. Pays off. Defense number 18. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Natron Brooks call for the 15 yarder. Now, I really respect guys that play physical, but you have to be smart. You can't just put your hands on and knock Tober down and then put your hands up like, man, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. You gotta be subtle with your holds and grabs and tugs. I mean, still could have been the right play, but 15 when could have been another touchdown for Tolbert. So from the 45. Hand off. That's Lacey. On the sweep, Lacey takes it inside the 40-yard line. Scott makes the stop. It's a heck of a play there by Scott to disengage the block, get himself free, and come off that outside edge and make the tackle. It was blocked up beautifully. But Scott there being the force player does what he's supposed to do and comes up with the tackle. Hands on hips for the Southern Miss defense. Now South Alabama chooses to huddle here. See if they run it in a hurry on second and five. Fake it, toss it. Looking for Wayne, and it's incomplete. Wayne couldn't track the football. Him be there in coverage on Jalen Wayne. Him be almost beat on that inside move. Almost. Ended up in perfect phase. And the ball clearly not on target. But another third and medium here for the Jags. This has been a down that. They've been more than successful, five for seven tonight. They like that short, controlled passing game to tight ends, getting Trotter outside the backfield, or receivers right between the hashes, right in front of them. Trotter on third and five. Back to the air. It is knocked away incomplete. This time intended for Thomas. Fourth down. Thomas had a nice push off at the very end. I thought Trotter had a spot route maybe with Crum there, number 20. He pushes off at the very end right there, but not enough to be able to get his hands back underneath the football. Clearly not able to track as well as Tolbert. And credit Southern Miss D. Eric's We're getting a stop there, but here they go again, the Jags. 
I like this. Being aggressive with the way that their defense is playing, particularly in the red zone, why not go for it here? Play clock winding, however. Five seconds. Four. Take the timeout. Have to use the timeout, yep. and they will. Timeout. South Alabama, their first. It'll be 30 seconds. Now, in a situation like this, you lose the element of surprise and maybe some of the chaos that can be created if you get right up to the line of scrimmage. You have to make those decisions quickly. As a play caller, know that it's four down territory. Have the green light to do that so that you have a chance to take advantage of a defense that doesn't know what's coming. So active road losing streaks. This is a, a list you do not want to be on. They, their last road win, October of 2017. That's a long, long time. You know, it's funny, talking with Steve Campbell, I asked him, I said, when you took this program over, is this where you guys thought you would be as you entered this season? He said, be honest with you, I thought we'd be a little further along. We struggle in our first couple of years, but I really like the team that we have. We have some of the recruits. We need to keep adding to our talent and get guys to get drafted, get guys that start making some of the awards watch lists. It's heading in the right direction. They really like where they're at, and they're playing their tails off tonight, trying to get their first road win in three years. Fourth and five, going for it again. Out of the timeout, and Trotter goes for it. Holden Tolbert makes another great grab in front of Brooks. First and goal, South Alabama. Another fourth down conversion. Don't know what the safety's doing there. You got to get over there and help out. Tolbert's been killing them all night with those jump balls, going up and high pointing it perfectly. That's the concentration that we saw Thomas lack on the last play. How about the confidence of deep ball on fourth and five? This one goes for 31, and now Trotter, the keeper on first and goal, takes a big pop. Orla comes in to get the stop. Trotter carries for a two-yard gain. Trotter's hobbled a little bit. He doesn't look like his same mobile self that we've been able to see. Ever since he ran along that sideline, there was a little, little bit of a hitch right before he went out of bounds on that. And you wonder if he's just doing what a quarterback should do, and that's sucking it up and Second playing through go from the seven. some expected pain. In his fifth career start, career high in passing. Tire goes in motion. Give it to Davis. Davis tough running inside the five. He's going to reach and stretch, but he was down. Malik Shorts, touchdown saving tackle. I love that. It's the stretch zone. It gives the running back an ability to run laterally when he sees the lane puts his foot in the ground and goes that right elbows down that right knee is down you love and appreciate the effort by Davis but a good call by the officials 11th play of the drive Desmond Trotter on third and goal back of the end zone and incomplete out the back of the end zone this time Tolbert Trotter's got a incomplete advantageous matchup however this is Tyrek Moody who goes down did a good job in coverage on Tolbert but Moody down for now yeah, Tolbert was too close to the back line the ball was too high he had no chance to get that right foot inside the end zone you see Moody immediately comes up gimpy a little bit of a delayed onset to whatever that was so Moody will get some attention on the sideline nearby pedal Carter when we came on the air you mentioned the weather yeah. here in the Pine Belt the balmy 86 degree kickoff at 8 o'clock at night these guys there's no way with the abbreviated camp preparation that you could be in the condition necessary that you would have been had you had an entire spring had you had a regular fall camp a lot of this first two weeks was walk through stuff where you get the good classroom but you don't get the the reps and the conditioning that you need. Wahardo 21 yarder missed from much further out. Wahardo 21 yarder that is good. Three more on the board for South Alabama. Golden Eagles hold them out of the end zone. 
Fourth down, set it up again. And when it's fourth down, you need to convert. Where else do you go? But Jalen Tolbert hauls it in for 31. That sets up the 21-yard field goal. And South Alabama going for a big win on the road to start 2020. South Alabama out of the Sun Belt, leading Southern Miss from Conference USA late in the third quarter. Saturday, 1.30 Eastern, our college football week one coverage continues. Middle Tennessee State taking on Army from West Point. Catch all the action, CBS Sports Network. Ben Holden, Ross Tucker, and Tina Servasio will have it for you, including Asher O'Hara, who took over a big role, Middle Tennessee quarterback, over a thousand rushing yards and 29 total touchdowns. One of the biggest weapons in all of college football at QB for Middle Tennessee. Big shoes to fill that Stockstill family. He's had a long and yeah. prosperous career there in Middle Tennessee. O'Hara had a heck of a year last year. Rick and Brent. Asher from Rolling Meadows, Illinois. All right, if you're Southern Miss, you need some sort of spark play here. South Alabama's not letting up. They're playing good defense in the red zone in their offense. When they touch the ball, they're getting points. Golden Eagles need to respond. From inside the five, Tim Jones slips away. Tim Jones across the 30, skip along. He brings it out across the 40-yard line. There again, your spark play it comes on special teams for Tim Jones. It's a 30 eight-yard return for Jones. In this second half to start, Southern Miss came out and took a deep shot to try to build off this momentum. It's going to be interesting to see the play call here. Do you take the cheap shot or the deep shot and try and keep it going or put a methodical drive together that must end in a touchdown? Best starting field position for Southern Miss. They've had two drives that went 10-plus plays that didn't result in a touchdown. Difference in the game. Abraham hands off Perkins shoved back immediately. That's been the issue for Southern Miss. Certainly has been improving the running game was something that they wanted to do less than 50 yards on the ground tonight. That's not the sort of improvement they were looking for. Five tackles for loss for South Alabama. One of the worst numbers for Southern Miss last year. They gave up seven tackles for loss per game. And it has not gotten better tonight. They're right on that pace. Abraham on second and 11. He's looking long. Settles for a dragging receiver, McCoy, who's going to take it inside the 25. Abraham wanted the deep ball, but McCoy dragging across. Makes the grab and turns it into a 34-yard game. You're going to see him come from the right side of the screen. Watch the way Abraham goes through his full lead, comes back to his last outlet, hits him in stride, who then just turns on the afterburner. Those are the sort of spark plays that this offense has been missing. Not a long throw, but a big run after the catch. So Jones on the kick return. And now McCoy inside of a minute to go in the third. Golden Eagles trying to come back at home. Abraham Perkins stopped again. Nothing. Cole leads the way. Goldman there. These linebackers are biting hard. Might be a play action opportunity. The defensive lines winning their matchups up front. They're crossing faces. They're shedding blockers. It's an offensive lineman. You got to stay between the defender and the ball carrier. And number 12 and the rest of that crew, Riley Cole and the rest of those backers, Mobley, just leaving little room to run up there. Press coverage up top, single safety. Abraham tips and almost picks. It was knocked away by Flanord. Flag down. I don't know if that could be on Flanord. That was equal rights to the ball, and he saw that ball leave the quarterback hands before the wide receiver did. He might have played through his back, and that's what they called. But you see him smiling. He knew Pass he should have had it. Defense, number one, automatic first down. That's the spot of the five.
18th, it'll be brought to you by the catering experts at Diggy's Barbecue Pit. We speak barbecue. Yeah, he impeded his ability to catch it. Get your hand there and just knock it down without that contact with the right hand. And that would have been a heck of a play. Instead, it's first down. Six seconds left in the third. Score. Nothing again. It's DeShazer who makes a stop to bring the third quarter to an end. So we head to the fourth in our college football opener this on is the CBS end of the Sports quarter. Network. South Alabama by 10. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Producer Carlo Gennarini, our director Corey Fishman, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, our entire CBS Sports Network crew here from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and 23-13 uh, as we go to the fourth. We, we talked at the very beginning of this. We say, hey, hopefully we can just get lost in enjoying a college right. football game. I, I hope you have, because we have. There ain't been anything else I've been thinking about except this game and how much fun it is to be back on the TV in the booth with that mustache. <laughs> You know, I think we just have about another week before we say oh. adios to the, now the beard was really sad. That's when the, the beard, uh, you know, in the early days of the of the quarantine and had the beard going and that, that just didn't work out great. That looked like Desert Island stuff. So mustache, more fun. Abraham hands off, Ragsdale inside the 15. But yeah, at some point, at some point, it's going to be adios, quarantine mustache. I like the long hair, too. That was a good look. I'm a little uh, a little upset the wifey made you go uh -oh. to the barber before uh -oh. you, you drove over here. I think the employers were more happy with the haircut. <laughs> yeah. I was starting to look like James Wood in Casino. And now we turn to third and eight for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And this is critical because they have had only one touchdown and the three red zone trips. So this is a big one for Southern Miss. Yeah, they've struggled on third down and in the red zone. Here they got to play this both. Abraham pressured, releases, oh. and it's incomplete. It is off the hands of Ragsdale coming out of the backfield. And now you're fourth down in the red zone. Down by 10. Still a lot of time. Going to take the points. Attempt to take the points. Left tackle got beat that time. There was pressure right in Abraham's face that forced the errant throw. It was right there. A perfect Texas route by Ragsdale. But now again, another stall in the red zone, Carter. This has absolutely been the story of this game. The Golden Eagles' inability to convert when they get inside the 20. Oh. And that one is no good. The hold didn't get down, and Bourgeois can't get it through so you get zero on this trip to the red zone so you're one for four touchdowns and now a botch on the snap and the hold and bourgeois snyder couldn't get it down bourgeois couldn't get it through jack's hold Time now for Pound for Pound, brought to you by Rogue Fitness, Jalen Tolbert, 195 listed. So this is an easy Pound for Pound. He's been the best. He has been the best. He plays like a big bodied wide receiver, even though he isn't very big. He's tall and lean and tremendously athletic. But his ability to high point footballs and track the football and body contours is pretty impressive. How about that drop note there? Six touchdowns in the last two games. That's money. And Carter, a key play on the field goal on Southern Miss's last possession was a bad snap that was low. It was hard for the holder to get it. He did the best he can, but the ball falls out of his hands right as it's kicked. And that's what forced the miss. 
No pun intended. That hair is sweet, though. Yeah, you don't don't blame the don't blame the mullet from Bourgeois. And I mean, he's he's been he's been working with the fader too. There was a little bit more business than party. <laughs> it was still pretty good. <laughs> Davis. Oh, it slips through. He's still tackled for a loss, but that's. Yeah, one a, a one-yard loss versus a right? three-yard loss. That's some of the that's some of the toughest and best running yards Davis has had tonight. Makes the job of the play caller quite a bit easier, but credit Southern Miss there for getting some penetration there. And playing on the other side of the football. They've struggled to do that as you see Steve Campbell with a 10-point lead with 13 and a half minutes knows that these next couple drives are extremely important. Desmond Trotter. Pressure, but more space on the edge. Wayne makes the grab. He'll be short of the first down. Harold makes a stop. One of the things I noticed about Trotter is his eyes downfield. Watch the pressure. He's so poised in the pocket. Some pressure backside, pressure in his face, but he never drops his eyes. That's a sign of an experienced quarterback. He's only a first-year starter. Started four games a season ago, so very little experience, but got some very good mechanics that allows him to be successful. Quick snap, third and one, get it across. Appear to get it across. Both teams pushing, but that should be a first down. Now... Bozeman comes out of the pile with the football. Uh, but the call is first down. Let's take a look. Not official. Looks like first down. South Alabama. And that's a second, third, or fourth and short situation. That the Jags dialed up a sneak, put some trust in that offensive line. Southern Miss was pretty stout there. They didn't need much, and they got it. They're playing on. Fake it on first and ten. Trotter steps up in the pocket, steps away, and puts a wiggle as he gets across the 40-yard line. Hobbes makes the tackle. Trotter now holding his hamstring. He had a shoulder issue in the second quarter. Now he's holding the handy a little bit. Watch how he eludes pressure there. Bales straight up through the pocket in the B gap. But to your point, grabbing that hamstring, he's been hobbled since the first half, and now he's actually coming out. So Chance Lovertich into the game for South Alabama. And again, the there was a question mark after halftime because of the shoulder injury, whether Trotter would be able to go in the second half. He has. But now you give it to Lovertich, but he won a Juco National Championship at Mississippi Gold Coast. They have a lot of confidence in him. Lovertich going to hand off. Davis on the right side. Good push. Davis gets it across the 45. This coaching staff has a lot of confidence in Lovertich. Let him come in right there at the end of the second half and throw on his first play. But here they give it to Davis, who's running really hard. Another Golden Eagle down. This is... I believe it's Todd Sykes. A big nose tackle up inside. Splits time with Josh Ratcliffe. 6'3, 308 pound redshirt junior. Mm. Columbus High School in Columbus, Mississippi. Well, you can see Trotter trying to stretch out and the training staff trying to get him hydrated. Bro, oh, oh. There, there's nothing that can get you in shape for football except football. And that was significantly compromised. In the spring, in the summer, in the early fall. Don't know what happens here to Sykes. He's dropped his pad level a little bit. Ragsdale maybe got the best of that tackle. Excuse me, Davis. That's a big dude, man. Mm -hmm. So Sykes comes off. They roll three at the nose. Chesser and Cole. Holding the solar plexus. Trotter getting stretched out. It's really hot. Guys are dehydrated. Lovertich comes in. The coaching staff told us he's going to play. He's not real big, but he has earned through his play during camp, as crazy as it's been, the opportunity that he's got right now. Baker goes in motion. Handoff on second and five. Stopped. 
Josh Ratcliffe makes the tackle. Feel a kind of a little bit of the lull in the energy right now. Neither team really feeling juice. The Jags have their backup quarterback in. They've been pretty dang good, 60% on third down tonight. Got a very makeable third and three. This is the first test of the night for Lovertich. Lovertich, quick hitter, caught, first down. Baker slips free inside the 35. Baker will take it. Touchdown, Jags. 52 yards from Lovertich to Kawan Baker, and now South Alabama is in command in the fourth quarter. And look at that body language. It looked like Lovertich bobbled it, but he didn't. It wasn't a snap that was on target, but he pulled it up, put the laces on the money to Baker, who then accelerated beautifully. And again, missed tackles for what looks to be a very tired Southern Miss defense. Walhardo misses the PAT. The kicking woes continue. So Baker's from Atlanta. He plays for South Alabama, but he gives the Golden Eagles a little Mississippi half step uptown to the loop. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue. Don't weaken. By the Toasted S'mores Shake. Only at Sonic. And by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? That's Seymour, as in Seymour DeCampus, but he's actually seeing less of DeCampus <laughs> with that headgear. I'm not sure exactly what Seymour's going for there, but... <laughs> I don't think he's achieved it. And that's kind of uh, part and parcel of what it's been like for the Golden Eagles tonight, trying to keep up with uh, these Jags, these explosive South Alabama Jaguars. One of our keys to the game, we'll revisit it later, but defensive coordinator Tony Pecoraro for Southern Miss said, we cannot let them beat us up over the top. And that's exactly what's happening here. And you combine that with the lack of red zone production, offensively for the Golden Eagles. That's why they find themselves down like they are. Worth repeating, South Alabama hasn't won a road game since 2017. Did he only call for a fair catch? Well, they're going to blow it dead anyway. But I'm not, not sure if he called for the fair catch, but regardless. Let's see if we can sort this one out. Maybe considering that giving himself up. Yeah, it's TQ Newsom. Yeah, no wave off, but definitely gives himself up. So they did blow it dead. We'll make sure we get the spot right. <laughs> Newsom, I mean, I, I, I know he's practiced there, but Newsom is a linebacker, so you're not Game used clock to. operator, please reset the game clock to 10 minutes, 20 seconds. <laughs> please set the re game clock to 10, 20. Do you think they're having you. fun? <laughs> with, that, with that fair catch. And then uh, I was like, and then he was like, and then I was like. Major work to do for Jack Abraham and the Golden Eagles. Rolling. Goes out of bounds with just a yard. But I mean, willing to reiterate here, we know it's it's a different year and it's a it's a different opener, but South Alabama. They were one and seven in the Sun Belt last year. They've won three conference games in two years. They haven't won a road game since 2017. They were big underdogs in this one. And yet they have come in and taken it to the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And really when we expected Southern Miss to have a response and come out firing, hasn't been the case yet. Jones holds it in from Abraham. Bring in the fight, late. This is just a receiver doing what a receiver does. Here he is right here, gonna work and beat the coverage of the safety. Just one-on-one. -on -one. 
with the slug or the slant and go and just completely discombobulates the defensive back. And that's been the combination that's been best so far tonight. Gain of 42. Abraham oh. lost the football, has to hop on top of it. And boy, it was nearly given away by Abraham. Bell nearly got on top. Ball just slips out of his hands. It happens, but great home bounce. Goes right back to the to the breadbasket. I mean, if you would have said Abraham doesn't turn it over, no INTs, and you're down 29-13 of the fourth. Brownlee, screen, blockers ahead. Freeing Brownlee, takes it just inside the 20. It's another red zone trip for Southern Miss, but here's where the problem is for the Golden Eagles. We haven't seen much of the bubble screen game tonight. This offense a year ago was more of a deep vertical threat. We just saw that, but that's a nice switch up. But to your point, this has been the Achilles heels for them. Now they're gonna mark it just outside the 20, but now it's officially a red zone trip where they have only one touchdown out of four trips, two field goals, and one miss. This is an important set of downs here for South Alabama. If they can get a stop here and force a field goal, it makes it really hard for Southern Miss, and it gives them a big emotional blow. And if you're the Golden Eagles, you get a touchdown here to get back into nine, maybe go for two to make it an eight-point game. You're back in this deal. Perkins. Takes a handoff, Cole makes the stop near the 10. He's the big bruiser, Southern Miss, not rushing up to the line, being methodical, making sure that they protect the football and execute. Third and one, turn around, hand it to big 33, let him move the pile. Abraham does just that. Perkins gets enough. It will be first and goal for the Golden Eagles. South Alabama defensive coordinator Greg Stewart runs a pretty simple defense. He says his philosophies are stance, alignment, technique. No bells, no whistles. I just want to line up and play, and his unit's done a great job. Can they find a way to force a field goal, get off the field here? Abraham pulls it this time, takes it inside the five. Big pop as he gets to the two. I mean, he was took a lick from Trey Young, but Abraham top is never in question. Second and goal. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of his legs tonight, but he's pretty effective when he runs. Give it to Perkins. Shoved back at the goal line. It will be third and goal for the Golden Eagles. Struggling to punch it in again. And if you're Southern Miss, I don't think you try to run this football. Abraham's your best offensive player. He led the best passing attack in the Conference USA a season ago. Don't be stubborn down here. This defensive line for South Alabama has risen up. You got your best player right there. Try to get him the football. Another 10 play drive. Can they finally get it in? Perkins pushing, short. stretching. He appears to be and is just short. It will be fourth and goal. And no question you're going forward on fourth and goal at this point. And the Golden Eagles trying to avoid. Look how gassed they are. Yeah. They're tired, man. They're playing with a lot of heart, but they're tired. Twice they've already had two 10-play drives that didn't result in touchdowns. Now, big time timeout. Timeout. Timeout before it's snapped. South Alabama gets the timeout in. Heads up play that time by their leading tackler from last before year, Nick Mobley. Before the snap, timeout, South Alabama. They're second. It'll be 30 seconds. That was confusion. They didn't know what was going on. They wanted some bigger bodies in there because they expected the quarterback sneak that eventually came. You see Mobley right there. No, 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 this ain't right. That's heads up savvy veteran leadership there. Fourth and goal, you're clearly going for it. Now, Perkins is the big back. This may be, I mean, the timeout South Alabama was needed because uh, personnel-wise, they were discombobulated, but also gave Perkins a break. You pointed out, I mean, Perkins is really, he's taking some hits down here by the goal line. He's your big back, fourth and goal. You have the option, Abrams, Perkins. 
And this may actually be a bit of a break to get a breather for those guys as well. And it also allows Southern Miss to, to get their thoughts together about what it is they want to do. If they want to be stubborn and try to run the football again, so be it and go for it. The Jags defensive line has largely won this matchup. Give this staff credit for trying to force this football, but you need a touchdown here with that short of a distance, lean on the big guys and let them push this ball into the end zone. They ran a sneak there. Abraham got across the line of scrimmage, even though the timeout was called. But it's needless to say, partner, this is the most important down offensively for Southern Miss tonight. And Perkins is not in the game. He's their big bruiser. So it's Ragsdale. Handoff, touchdown. It's official. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Now, the timeout has also given you a chance to discuss your two point and which play you want to go with if you do go for a two point conversion. It wasn't by much, but he got that football across the plane in for the touchdown but to your point we said it a couple plays right here before they scored go two point conversion here which they are makes it a one score eight point game driver gets it in and now the two point play it's a toss and it is good the two point conversion oh. baker holds it in and pays the price for it they had it all lined up it was driver who takes it in and then driver who tosses the two point conversion baker Makes the grab, paid the price, but he gets the two points, making this an eight-point game. So it was all about the driver. Narcus gets into the end zone with a touchdown, and then he tosses it on the two-point conversion play. Baker makes the grab. Golden Eagles, not done yet. Tonight's Old Trapper player of the game is Desmond Trotter. As much for fighting through. Shoulder injury in the second quarter. Hammy here late. Getting it into the hands of his big play makers and making plays himself. Just doing a great job of all night long feeding the playmakers and operating this offense. You watched them come in last year in the last four games. And everybody's play around him elevated. And he's picked up right where he left off. It's a really impressive night tonight. But the question becomes, Carter, is he going to be able to leave this drive with over five minutes left to take his team and get their first road victory in quite some time? Since 2017, it looks like Trotter will be ready to go for this series. After leaving the last series, Chance Lovertich took over after Trotter had a hamstring tightened. That's a fair catch. It'll be to the 25 for South Alabama. With an eight-point lead, Southern Miss does have those three timeouts. But first, they have to get the stop. And that's key. And that's why if you're South Alabama, you dial up your best stuff. Davis has been running extremely hard. You have maybe a less ability to use Trotter's legs, but Jalen Tolbert, is a guy they can prove to go up and get it. Little cat and mouse here, but dial up your best stuff and move these sticks and bleed as much of that clock as you can, hopefully ending this drive like you have most of the night, and that's with some points. South Alabama hasn't punted tonight. Just the two INTs by Trotter. Only time they've been stopped. Davis brought down Maples. Well, he's been tough for Southern Miss tonight. He's twice left the game and twice come back. That outside linebacker, Hayes Maples. That was 12 personnel there running that counter, but that Southern Miss defense, they've been money against the run over the last years, and those are the sorts of plays you need, dialing up a second and 10. Now the scales are tilted in favor of the Golden Eagles. South Alabama can take it inside of five minutes if they want to. No rush at this point with an eight-point lead on the road. Nice job by Trotter bleeding this clock. Calls it a little bit late. Might have been too long there. They got to get the snap off. Trotter gets it off. Hands off Davis across the 30. He has a first down. Davis all the way out to midfield, and he's still rolling. 
takes the Golden Eagles with them inside the 35. Carter, there was some incredible efforts there. The zone read, Trotter hands the ball off to Davis, but keep your eye on number one. Look at the effort. He follows here. At first, it's Davis, who's smart enough to stay inside, comes back inside. But look at Trotter banged up. The quarterback downfield trying to help his guys out. You think they want this win? Mm. That is an incredible effort. And if you're Southern Miss, you cannot afford to do that. Big plays have plagued them all night, and it gets them again here late in the fourth quarter. That is muscle shoals. Just outside of four minutes. When you snap it on first down, give it to Davis again. Why not? He earned it. Scott Maples in on the stop. Maples has played tough all night. A nice job again on first down by Southern Miss. Two yard gain. Can they do mm. better on second down than they did on that last drive where Davis busted a long one? Southern Miss is best when it's aggressive, when it's playing across the line of scrimmage, when it plays downhill. They've got to do that here. Davis now has more rush yards than Southern Miss does. Free Second play. eight flag down here is the free play, and here's the shot, and it is incomplete for Tolbert, but you take it on the free play. Second and eight, now it's second and three. Critical error again. Offside, defense number two made contact with offensive player. Five yard penalty, so second down. All right, three timeouts for Southern Miss. Correction, third down. It's 331, but it, it, it's starting to get late. If you can get if you can get South Alabama into a third the down, you, on number three, you start thinking about using down. a defensive timeout. Uh, potentially with at the 331 mark at least it now enters into the equation and you don't like that body language right there by Eric Kitchen number two clearly frustration setting in for the Golden Eagles you have to get your composure back and meanwhile for South Alabama you convert and you can you can start bleeding those timeouts from Southern Miss no question Trotter gonna hand off. That's Avery. He has the first down, Got has it to the 21 here. yard line. Well, the clock stops temporarily moving the chains. And so, I mean, not, not much of it, maybe five seconds, but that's now, now Southern Miss certainly needs to think about the defensive timeouts to preserve clock. But the bigger challenge is just stopping South Alabama. They can't do it. Davis off that right side. I'm surprised they didn't take a time out there to let their guys regain their composure. You have three. You know what South Alabama is going to do bleeding the clock. But right now you got bigger problems if you're Southern Miss than how many timeouts you've got because you can't stop the Jags. Crowder's going to hand off. Avery tiptoe in his way. I mean. Uh, he was slipping away from the Golden Eagles so much that his right tackle Estes almost made the stop on the play, but second down, no timeout yet from the Golden Eagles. So you're going to roll it well down under two minutes and, and no timeouts. You got three of them down by eight. You have to use some defensive timeouts at some point here. I thought they should have used it a play ago, and now they're just letting it bleed down. You understand, you know what the charts say, but your defense hadn't been able to stop these guys. Look at Trotter bleeding the clock perfectly. Southern Miss, you got to make a play here. Trotter, hands off again. Avery stopped. There's the first time out with a minute 50. Southern Miss, they're first. And third and six, ball game could be on the line. An eight point lead right now for South Alabama on Southern Miss. And coming up when we're done, it is inside college football with a full look at the landscape that is as we kick off the 2020 season. So we've gotten to that odd score 29 21 in part because of some woes in the kicking game. I mean, neither of these teams has a reliable kicker. Wajardo has missed a PAT, he's missed from 46. This is his first game as the placement kicker. So three on the board for South Alabama is not a given. So that factors into these decisions as well. Southern Miss has two timeouts and you think they should have at least used one more. 
just to regain their composure. They had to take it. You understand saving it to the very last minute, but to me it seemed like the defense was tired and frustrated. I would have liked to have seen a timeout taken much earlier. On third and six, keep it on the ground to run the clock. Nothing much doing in the ground game. There's the timeout with a minute 46. So fourth timeout. down. Southern Miss, they're second. It'll be Do you have second. more confidence in your offense right. to pick this up on fourth and five where they took a deep shot and let their quarterback throw it downfield and converted? Or do you let your field goal kicker get up there, which isn't a given at all? I mean, they, they have not. Uh, Southern Miss hadn't been able to stop you so far. Uh, and we'll take a look in a moment. This, the kicking woes for South Alabama. So that was maybe on the holder, but this is all, all plays in because there's the missed field goal from Wahardo, who again kicked off last year, but taking over placements, and then a missed PAT. So, you know, all of that, and you're going for your first road win since 2017. You don't hold back after everything that everybody in the country that plays this sport has gone through. If you want to win it all, you got to risk it all. Put the ball in your best player's hands, Desmond Trotter, and let him try to do it. Instead, they elect to kick the field goal. I don't think this is smart at all. I would have much preferred to see Trotter have a shot to convert this. Well, confidence in the kicker to see if, and the special teams unit cool. may have been tipped, but it is good anyway. There is three more on the board. And it would take a miracle now for Southern Miss with a minute 41 timeout and down by 11. So they show a lot of confidence in Wajardo and he boots it through. Wow. So Steve Campbell in South Alabama. This is a momentous opportunity for this program. And it is a completely clean operation. The bobbled miss snaps that plagued them earlier were gone. And Guajardo drills it. It wasn't pretty, it took its time to get there, but it got through. And Steve Campbell absolutely loves it. This is the turning point in the win that this program needed. All eyes in the country watching this team, if they can hold on here, this might be the exact thing the doctor ordered for a team that was looking to turn the corner. I mean, that smile says it all. You closed 2019 with a huge upset win over Arkansas State. catch got it this time well Carter let's revisit these keys of the game South Alabama's offensive line won their matchup no sacks allowed from a team that had 39 a season ago and the defense with all those young guys up front more than handled business especially in the run protect the football great job by Southern Miss no turnovers but the explosive plays South Alabama had eight of 15 plus three of those were touchdowns those touchdowns averaged 52 yards apiece. The passing defense woes that plagued the Golden Eagles a year ago are back with them in 2020. Well, for South Alabama, we talked about the big wins in 2016. Mississippi State, San Diego State. That was under Joey Jones. This would be... Brownlee holds it in. This would be the biggest win in the two years under Steve Campbell, in the three years under Steve Campbell now. And, and Southern Miss is going to fight it all the way to the end. But South Alabama really brought the fight, including late. The Jags have scored on all four possessions of the second half. When we talked to him about this game. He said, man, to get to this point, it means so much. We need to play. If it weren't for football, I wouldn't have went to college. I was the first in my yeah. family to go. It means everything. And we've uh, talked about how football provides opportunities that's loose it's scooped up down down, down, down down i mean in a variety of ways tonight we've talked about what college football means and the bigger picture and that's exactly right when steve campbell's saying hey what does football mean to me it, it means everything it means life education a job 
for all of us, man. How about this, breaking that streak since 2017, the longest active streak in college football without a road win is about to get broken. Less than a minute to go. Abraham checked down. Prevent now for South Alabama. No mistakes, nothing over the top. Block is your friend. Scoreboard's your friend. Everything's your friend right now. Just don't do anything stupid. Keep everything inside and in front. Make Southern Miss earn it. But again, talking to Campbell, so what'd you talk to your team about through all this adversity? And he said, man, I used a boxing analogy. Learning to make it to the next round, guys. We just got to stay in the fight. Let's stay injury free. Let's do the little things. Let's not get contact traced out. Wear your mask, social distance. And here they are, with possibly on the verge of the biggest win for him so far in this program. Abraham takes off. He's going to take it inside the 20. He's going to take it inside the 10. He gets out of bounds with 43 seconds showing. Not so fast. Those were the wheels of Abraham. But I mentioned at the very top of this broadcast, very underutilized in my opinion, but they're there when he needs them, and that was a huge play. Longest run for Southern Miss tonight. The red zone woes that have plagued him, Carter, can they overcome them? Too many field goal attempts when they get down inside the 20. They need two scores here, no matter what, but you'd like to start with a touchdown. Abraham on the roll, just dumps it out, 36 seconds. So now you're trying to figure out, since you need two scores, you got to get the onside kick and score again. How much time are you willing to compromise getting that touchdown? But you also want to take it out of the hands of your kicker. The options and time are starting to tick away from Jay Hobson. But for Southern Miss, if you can't pull off the miracle, this is an ominous start. Abraham, that is caught by Brownlee. He's short of the end zone. He's tackled. One timeout left for Southern Miss. Now gonna stop it here as Cole is slow getting up. That may be the stoppage. Timeout, Southern Miss, okay. their third and final. It'll be 30 seconds. So, I mean, that's a heck of a play by Cole to tackle Brownlee. I mean, he hits hard every time. Cole gets the brunt of this one, but also tackles Brownlee short in play, forcing the Golden Eagles to use that final timeout. It's a huge stop. And Cole, somebody that's battled injuries mostly his entire career, last year stayed relatively injury free and had a heck of a season, fifth on the team in tackles. This year, they move him back inside. But again, defensive coordinator George Stewart couldn't have been more complimentary to the attitude and effort of Riley Cole. It was a huge stop there. A leader in every facet for South Alabama. So if you're South Alabama, you're talking to your hands team right now, telling them to get ready. Seymour's not done. <laughs> Bro, we talked about it, man, at the top of this broadcast, how grateful we were just to be here. All we wanted for three and a half, four hours was to see football again. These kids, these coaches, this community, everybody in the country has wanted and needed exactly what we've got here. And who knows? And who we knows? might not be done yet. Greatest sport on the planet. Abraham, third and goal. Pumps, oh, scrambles killer. at the five. He shot. There's no killer. timeouts left for Southern Miss. Can't clock it. You either got to get your field goal team on or take a shot to the end zone as quickly as you can to preserve that clock. I mean, just your best players right here. Two score game, 10 seconds, no timeouts. No matter what happens on fourth down, it is knocked away. And South Alabama gets the football and the win. It will be a stunning opening road win for the South Alabama Jags, their first road win since 2017.
Just outside the outstretched arms of Marquise McCoy, this wide receiver core almost entirely rebuilt so many young first year players, and they end up miscommunicating for the ball game. Oh, he's trying not to <laughs> trying not to smile right now, Steve Campbell, but this is huge for the Jags. And let's take our hat off to Jack Abraham, man. What an incredible night. 22 for 32, 314 yards, but no touchdowns. He avoided the interceptions that plagued him towards the end of last year. But this is going to be a tough one for Jay Hobson and the rest of this crew. They fought hard, but not well enough. Trotter will take a knee in just his fifth start at quarterback for South Alabama. He leads the upset win on the road to begin 2020, snapping the 15-game road losing streak. And they do it in decisive fashion, 32-21. Well, we don't know how many college football games we're going to get and what they're going to look like in 2020. But I guarantee you for the South Alabama Jaguars, that 1-0 and feels like a championship right now. Just an incredible win. This is exactly what Steve Campbell needed. What plagued them a year ago was lack of a quarterback, but Desmond Trotter, number one, answered the call. Getting that ball to that man right there, Jalen Tolbert, and the rest of this receiving core. Jalen Wayne came up with a big play. Kawan Baker has been consistent, making plays his entire career. This is the play that Campbell needed. It was well-earned and well-deserved. Tolbert finishes with 169 yards and college football delivers again. It's been a long, hard road to even get to this moment. Who knows what is ahead? But it was a joy to have this tonight. It's going to be a fun 90 mile bus ride home, boy. Especially fun for the South Alabama Jags, 32-21. So for Aaron Taylor, our producer Carlo Gennarini, our director Corey Fishman, our entire hardworking crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We now take you back to our New York studios inside college football. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones standing by.